We are live. We are live. We are live. We are live. Power Book 2 episode. No, Power Book 4 episode 2. I always say Power Book 2. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's just easy to say. It just rolls off the tongue. Power Book 2. What's going on, everybody? We will be back on Sunday. <laughs> be black. We will be back on Sundays. It was just the Super Bowl, man, and I got a little caught up. I got on live last night, and we had us a free night, but we are back talking power. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. I uploaded the top five moments today. Uh, I just got done watching Fresh, well, I was going to say Fresh Friends, Bel Air, episode two. Watch Euphoria. So I got a lot of stuff to record after we get off this live, but I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying, go this week without actually talking about the show because I know a lot of people are asking questions about it. And they want to know what the hell is going on in the power universe. We got JP out here. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Kendall? What's up, Juan? How's it going, Juan? We got Kendall in here. Court, court. That's my dog. That's my dog right there. Court, court. Whenever I see her in there, I know she's about to ask me some wild stuff. <laughs> Let me see where we at. Let a few people get up in here. We got some some things going on now. Y'all yeah, got to bear with me. I told you I got a new monitor. So the monitor I'm on now, my main one is 28 inches. It's a little bit bigger than the desk that I had because my monitor I had before this one was only, I think this thing is like a 24. So if you see me leaning over like this, it's because I'm trying to read what's going on on the other side of the screen because I can only see like, if y'all can see where the mouse is, like from this part over, unless I look. So I got a new desk. Well, I'm looking for a new desk, and I'll be getting another monitor. So we're continuing to upgrade. But y'all know how we do it. There's no order. What's on? What's going on, Linda, Shakita, Eric, Monica? Oh, we got Kim in here, Tracy, Anna. Okay, we back. We back. I know y'all were like, man, you going to get on here Sunday night? I was trying to. Shy girl, what's going on? New subscriber. What's that symbol on the wall behind you? Well, it's just lights. If you look at it, it's actually an antenna. So you got the, let me see if I can point to it. You got the bottom of it and it goes up. It's like an antenna for a TV. Well, you know, the antennas that are outside. Because you see my logo is Modi J and it's the TV on it. So, you know what I'm saying? TV antenna. That's just the big antenna outside that you see. That's all it is. People were asking me, was it any kind of signs or anything? I'm like, nah, it ain't nothing special. I just wanted to make an antenna out of it. Plus, it's my first set of lights, and um, <laughs> they only give you nine to start off with, so I didn't know what, what symbol or logo to make. So I just said, man, hell, I'll make an antenna. Oh, don't worry about it, Eric. Last night was a free live where we just came on and talked about anything. So any TV show that came up, I think I'm going to start throwing those in throughout the week. You know, those are pretty. They get our mind wondering if there's any questions about shows when they're airing and stuff. You know, I'll get on Google and we'll look it up. But tonight is all about power. Book four, episode two. Y'all know how we do. There's no order to how we do this. Y'all tell me who we're going to talk about. And that's what we talk about. The recap goes in order. The lives we talk about, whatever, however, and whenever, as long as it pertains to power. Because that's all we care about. Go live. So who, who will be our first person we talking about today? Of course, you've seen I broke down who JP's son is, D Mac. Because I've seen a lot of people. When I first originally watched the episode, Elijah, the guy with the dreads, the other one, I thought that was his son, but it wasn't him. It wasn't him. It was the other one. The other black guy. I don't know what's that's that's a matter of fact, this is what we're gonna start with. JP and his son. I honestly don't know why he's upset with his dad. I mean, I don't know if he knows that it's his dad or JP did something in these streets. What are you guys thinking about that? What do you, what do you guys see? The reason that his son is shooting up the place. 
Oh yeah, we got uh, is it Lily? I call her Lil <laughs> Liliana. No, not Liliana. I call her Lillian. That's what I call her. Yeah, Lillian's the girl from the um, No Chiquita. She's not the one with the pink sneakers. Lillian is the girl that worked for Tommy and Ghost. Pink sneakers is the one that cut her on the face. You remember they had to kill pink sneakers later on because she robbed them on the elevator. Uh, Eric, that's what I, I want to know. I don't think he knows. Let me see. Well, before we even start off, this is so you guys know exactly who his son is. So if you look, he has on the same outfit that he had on in the episode. He got the little um, bandana wrapped around him. Got the Mac. So when you see him in the episode, the first time we actually see him, we don't see his face. But you see the Mac out the window. So when you start piecing everything together... All right, we see it hanging out. Then, I mean, of course, we see him shooting up. But if you paid close attention, they were giving you little hints of who he could potentially be. Because the first time he met up with Diamond and them, we seen him outside. Now, we didn't know who he was. We just thought they were random people. Turned out his name is Darnell, a.k.a. D-Mac. So. Oh, damn. Yeah, so we've seen him here. Then also, where's the next place? So he actually pulled a gun on his Uncle Tommy. Of course, he didn't know that this is his uncle at the time. We got him right here. He even did some talking. Now, I don't know if he knows that JP is his father or... Well, matter of fact, I think he knows JP is his father. But you got to understand, you remember the story that JP was telling in the house. JP was saying after he came out, his mother, d Max's mom, left when he was two years old. So he knows who his father is. And he could, he could probably be looking at his dad as if, oh, you walked out on us. Or, you know, we don't know if he's upset that he's, you know, he came out. So for him, that could be a reason to try to get rid of him. Because he has a picture of him. Well, we see him in the alley here. Let me see if I can find a picture. So he has the picture, and that's exactly what JP still looks like. So I think he knows that JP is his father. He's just upset about whatever JP had going on and left. Chiquita said, I think he's angry his father because he is gay and he uh, didn't think would work out with D-Mac's mom. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He could uh, perceive his dad as either you know, coming out and he didn't really agree with that or, you know, his mom told him that, oh, he left, he did this and this, when in reality it was the mom that left. So it could just be, you know, issues within himself. And we already know conversation rules the nation. If you talk to somebody, you're normally going to get through it. But, you know, he ain't talked to nobody. He over here shooting it up. We, <laughs> we only, what, we was only... Five seconds into the episode, Tommy out there reminiscing about Keisha and them, and we see a damn Mac pull up. Look, anybody that pulls up in this Dodge Magnum, it's 2020. Let me, the last time they made Dodge Magnums, man, when, let me see what the last year of production was the... Dodge Magnums. The final year was 2008. So if anybody has a Dodge Magnum in 2022, if you see them pulling up next to you, you know when you stop at that light, don't stop next to them where you can look straight across. Either stop a little bit in front of them or a little bit behind them. If they got a Dodge Magnum and it's tinted out, yeah, you could potentially be in a lot of danger. So it's best you get away from a Dodge Magnum. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Exactly, Eric. That's what I'm getting at. D Max's mom was probably saying, Oh, your dad left. He's no good, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, the dude just came out. I mean, I don't know about that situation. And I don't want to answer it wrong. You know what I'm saying? You got to, <laughs> I, I, I mean, 
I, I mean, I don't know. He was, I guess they were married and then either that or it was his baby mom, but they had the kid and he came out two years later. So she left. So I understand why she left, but whatever she told the kid to make him this upset to be shooting up the club, like, come on. They said, they said they shot up this club three times already. Three times and ain't hitting nothing. Man, if I'm JP, I'm closing this shit down. I'm going to go ahead and sell it. My pops is sick. I'm going to take what money I can and relocate throughout the city. I'm not about to keep getting shot up. And then you coming in here, this dude, like, JP in there sweeping it up, sweeping up all this glass. Tables are broke. Chairs are broke. I'm about this thing. Got, first of all, that's why they ain't making no money. We not going to act like we don't see this. This is why they ain't making no money. Look at this vodka and stuff they got. What is this? Ortharina? What is this crap? Ain't nobody trying to buy this bottom shelf liquor. You talking about no smoking? They need to at least be able to smoke cigarettes at the bar. That's what you do. Put a cigarette machine in there. Sell some black or mouths or something. Let them smoke in there. Ain't nobody buying that liquor. The kid's probably shooting it up because he didn't came up here one time talking about, man, they ain't got no good liquor selection in there, man. Your pops is tripping. Man, it ain't my dad, man. Hey Donnell, yeah, <laughs> Gloria, yeah. I I want to know though. Gloria looks like she's going down the same path as our old girl, R.I.P. to her soul. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, Miss Carrie. So right now we got Big Dan Smash, we got Tommy Dan Smash. It ain't no telling who else is in the city. We only got two episodes. It might come out. Diamond was knocking that off before he went in. <laughs> but as of right now, I don't know. I don't know why he's shooting it up, but I'm sure we're going to find out. And it has to just be some anger. You know, JP hasn't talked to him and been able to tell him that, um, you know, look, this is why your mom left. Maybe we can talk it out. You know what I'm saying? And then once. Once D Mac finds out that his uncle is Tommy, I don't know how that's going to work. Now, Tommy doesn't know what he looks like. Neither one of them know what D Mac looks like at this age, but D Mac knows what his father looks like because he don't, you know, most of those don't change too much. We just get gray hair. Now, when he finds out that that's his uncle, he's like, damn, Uncle Tommy, I can rock with you. You know what I'm saying? It's going to kind of be. It's going to kind of be the same scenario with Tariq. It's going to be, I can rock with Uncle Tommy. My dad, I don't really agree with what he was doing. You see how Tariq was with Ghost, but he would go talk to Tommy and tell him everything. So that if this relationship can, you know what I'm saying, if they can work it out, I could see D-Mac, you know what I'm saying, talking to Uncle Tommy and be like, hey, man, this is what we got going on. Oh, yeah, Double Black. Tommy, I mean, geez, a wee. I ain't never just pulled up to a city, went to the bar, and that same night knocked something down. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I went out, you know, we went out, we had a party, we went to a club or something. All right, you got a potential chance to do it. But Tommy just pulled up and, you know what I'm saying, just straight drinking and, like, shoot, it is what it is. It seems like he's shooting up the club when no one is there. So why hasn't... uh? So he had, so he wasn't trying to hurt JP, but send a message. Well, I mean, he's also shooting this club. I mean, we don't know what time the other two were. This is like eight or nine in the morning. Like you shooting up a club eight or nine in the morning. It's just like, man, I'm fucking with you. Yeah, that's what it really is. But I don't know. I don't know how that relationship is going to go between them, though. Of course, they're eventually going to have to come to the realization that hey, we're in the same city together. Now, one thing about JP. He keeps saying he doesn't, you know what I'm saying, he's not going to take this money from Tommy. But every single time Tommy puts money in front of his face, he takes that money. So, you know, you just got to, you know, he's like, oh, man, no, no thanks, man, no thanks, you know. I, I appreciate it, but Tommy, I don't need that money, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to I'm not gonna do that. Let's hit that like button, too, though, you know what I'm saying, before, before D-Mac get to shooting in my window because we ain't getting no likes, you know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead, hit that like button for me. Thank you. But we're going to see how the relationship goes from here, man. Y'all see the footage of baby Tommy? <laughs> Let me see what my boy Eric is saying. 
I don't think Tommy's going to want D Mac around Janar's crew once he finds out who he really is. Yeah, I could definitely see that. I could see Tommy being the one to actually rekindle the relationship between JP and D Mac. Especially because Tommy, he looks out for the kids. Now, if you start crossing Tommy, that's where it's going to be a problem and an issue. I mean, I don't know. Whoever D Mac is, though, wherever he's staying, he's putting this gun out. And I mean, this is a weird place to put it in this alley because eventually them leaves are going to blow away. So you have to relocate or whatever. You know, he probably can't take it home to his mom. But that's what I want to know if. If the mom is still did he did he mention anything about the mom other than she left him 14 years ago? Did anyone else did did y'all catch anything? Like did he say that the mom was dead or anything? If the club thing isn't working, why doesn't JP get a regular job? Uh well you gotta under um when your family owns something, because he said the bar was with him and his father. It was doing good until his dad got sick. Now, you remember, it was mainly his father's, and his father was there, but then his dad got sick, so that's why he's doing it. Okay, yeah. So I was just making sure of what's going on, man. That's why I was like, I don't, I don't think he mentioned anything about the mom like being dead or anything. So she's probably still in the city. Now, I know if I had a baby mama or, or whoever the, you know, saying my ex-wife had a kid, I would know where they stay. Even if we weren't on good terms, I would know where, you know, where she stays and where my kid is. JP just said the hell with it. He said, you know what? I don't care with D-Mac. I don't, my bad, not D-Mac. I don't care where Darnell goes and lives at with his mom. You know what? I'm just going to get married and just say the hell with it. They left me. I don't, I don't agree with JP on that aspect. I, I would still know where my kid is, even if me and the mama ain't good. Especially if we in the same city. Because ain't how Darnell is living, we can tell the mom ain't doing good either. It ain't like she just moved up in the game. She didn't got a good job. If D-Mac out here in the streets like this, you know what I'm saying? They struggling just like he is. Man, this dude got... <laughs> what is this from? Is this from... <laughs> is this from the club? You brought this stuff home? You know what I'm saying? Or is it for your wall that you trying to fix up the house? Whatever it is, JP, you need to get on it. And when Tommy brought 25K over, it shouldn't have been, well, I, 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 I don't want that money, Tommy. It should have been like, I'm grateful for this, Tommy. Thank you. Matter of fact, you can stay here with me. He talking about, I don't need that money. But watch this. He said he didn't need that money when he was at the club and Tommy gave it to him. What did he do? He took it. What did Tommy do here? He set the money down on the table. Uh-huh, watch. And I bet JP picked that thing up at the time he left and went to that damn Grand Theft Auto garage that he's staying in. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to see JP's father, to be honest with you. I mean, we do we really need to see him? What significance is he going to have? Unless he says something to Tommy about Kate. You know what I'm saying? Now, that could be something they bring him. But other than that, we don't need to see JP's father. Before the end of the episode, when they showed D Mac, I thought it was JP's ex, being that it seemed to have a beef too. Oh, I uh, I know what you're talking about. I don't know. Uh... Yeah, JP is mysterious. We we looking at him. We wondering how are you moving out here? What what are you doing, bro? Your club getting shot up. You coming home to grandma's house and just big chilling. Pops is sick. You're running a bar that's been shot up three times. It ain't making no money. <laughs> yeah, you need to get up in them streets and do something, brother. Because whatever you're doing right now, it ain't working. It ain't working. But if y'all seen, like, moving on from JP and his son, because we don't really know what the hell is going to happen between them. But when we seen Tommy pull up to this fire station, I said, man, here we go. Tommy just pulling up about to buy a whole fire station cash. The landlord was in there. He probably gave him it looked like maybe I'm saying maybe ten thousand dollars. I don't think Tommy gave him no 20. Now, if he was talking about for lease. I'm not leasing this place. No one wants to lease this old ass building like 
that thing needs to say for sale. We about to lease to own. Forget that. Go stay in the damn fire station. Yeah, and when Tommy, when Tommy bought the place, he showed up here, straight cash. It looked just like a Grand Theft Auto video game. He moved in, like, man, I gotta upgrade this thing. He had a stripper pole in there, he had a poker table. What is this? What is this guy doing? Living in here. You can tell he's a bum. <laughs> what is he living in here with a poker table, a strip? Like, bruh, you living all backwards, man. <laughs> Tommy pulled that gun on him too, though, and told him to get his ass up out of here. Hey, Manny Marie, that's what I was saying. That's exactly what I was saying. It's like full-time GTA, especially from the time him and him and Diamond got kidnapped. You go in there, you do a mission. Why are you on the mission? You get a call that you got to do something else on the mission. Then they turn the timer on. You got to go do it because if you don't get this done, something will happen to his brother. Now you upgraded. You got some money in your pocket. You didn't bought the new. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I thought, my bad, y'all. I'm talking big trash. I thought that was a stripper pole. I forgot this is a fire station. That's just how the dudes got downstairs, down the pole, man. I'm talking about a stripper pole. <laughs> and he got he got two poker tables. Look, he got one, two here. So he got three total. Two over here. You know this place stinks because it don't look like there's any heat in here. It's already low lighting. You got two poker tables. This is a fire pole, people. Not, not, you know, what I'm saying, not for the ladies. Y'all be careful on that. That's a real one. <laughs> then you got this junky ass leather couch that they used to sell back at uh, Montgomery Wards. If y'all old enough, y'all know what Montgomery Wards is. You go in there. Ooh, we getting a leather couch. You got the leather couch with this big old end table that is really supposed to be like a um, <laughs> a centerpiece, but they threw it over on the side because he's like, man, I'm not about to waste anything in this apartment. Then you got you got the other poker table here. You got the map for GTA up on the wall. Now, yeah, it's fictional. I know it's fictional, y'all. <laughs> he said the bowl is multifunctional. Look, what I don't get is Tommy is in this city. He goes over and grabs this map. This map probably from, well, let's just say this is 2022. This map is probably like an old map from 1990 or something. If you don't just pull out your Google Maps on your phone, Tommy, you, you got a good working cell phone. And you over here looking at this regular map. Unless it's showing you where water hydrants or something is, <laughs> you, you don't need to be looking at no map up off the wall. He talking about, hmm, let me pull this down. Okay, let me look at the coordinates. If we go north by northeast on here. Oh, that's where we went today. Oh, okay, 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 cool. I'm gonna go back here tomorrow because uh, my Tia, she was doing good. He's over here calling the lady his auntie. Chiquita said, how often does a guy run poker games, though? People are gonna be showing up wanting to play, right? I mean, the poker games they were playing, they probably weren't for money. You know what I'm saying? It's probably for that, a bag of that white, you know what I'm saying, little rocks or something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Barry said the spot gonna be nice once Tommy cleans it up. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be nice. Like we were saying, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto. It starts off bad. You go in there, like, oh man, let me go do a couple of more missions with Diamond, make some money, and then we can go ahead and upgrade this place to a whole nother level. What up, Brillo? I seen you were live earlier. I joined in there a little bit. I was listening in, but I was watching um Bel Air. I was watching episode two, man. So I wasn't really doing too much comic. I was trying to low-key pay attention to it you know it's a it's a good you know it's a good show it's a good show so episode one is up i'll have episode two up tomorrow episode three up wednesday <laughs> anna be swinging around that hey anna need to get off of that <laughs> Yeah, Miles, it's that stash house map. Like, man, ain't nobody nobody about to look at this map and look like look at these streets, man. You can't tell nothing that's going on. You better go to that Google Maps and then hit the uh what's it called? The terrain. I mean, not the terrain. You better hit that uh that satellite button, you know what I'm talking about? So you can actually see the streets. 
see what's going on in the city, see what the traffic look like, especially if you're going to be making drug stops and you only got an hour. You know what I'm saying? Rojos is people say you got an hour. Oh, shit, my bad. Let me let me get out of here. <laughs> Tommy up in this kill streak and getting to the bag and securing the WAP. Yeah, that is Tommy. Man, two episodes, three bodies. He's already ahead of the game. I'm talking about we ain't even made it to halfway point. He got more bodies than <laughs> Power Book Two. Let me think. Power Book Two, we had Jabari Ramirez. Well, Jabari was last season. Ramirez was last season. So this season, all we had was Lauren Carey, Zeke Mecca, but we didn't get those to like episode seven. So Tommy. He's going to pass them up. By the time we get to episode seven and eight, Tommy's going to probably have 10 bodies. 10 bodies, um, at least 50 bricks moved, uh, three parties at the gas, I mean the firehouse. Uh, let me see what else he got. Probably two haircuts by Diamond. Tommy's going to have a list of things that he's doing. And you're looking at, you're looking at how Tommy is moving around the city. He got a whip. So he's doing all this like boom, boom, boom. He don't need a ride how Tariq needed one. Tariq could probably catch some more bodies if, you know what I'm saying, he wasn't around walking around. But Tommy been in the city for, let me see, episode one was two days. Now, I don't know if this is right after, like the day after, but so far, it looks like it's been a total of four days that we've seen in two episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah, Mo. I forgot about Monet killed the contractor. But that was what, episode five, episode six, when they were trying to get that million to get Pops out. Tommy did three in two episodes. Season one, we wasn't even getting that kind of action in book two. But then again, it was based on a school campus. We did have the guy that, that died on campus. Hell, is Carlito still in that trunk? Did anybody get him out of that trunk? Yeah, Court Court, that's what we're about to talk about next. So when Tommy and Diamond, they're going to have that mutual respect. And I was talking about it in the top five moments where <clears throat> it's going to be similar to him and Ghost. They both had that mutual respect for each other also. Especially after uh, Diamond seen, you know, saying Tommy came in here, he was like, dang, he's starting to see it's trustworthy. Tommy's really about business. Because he didn't come in and try to scam him or nothing. He gave back all the money. I know people were asking me, how much money does Tommy have? I don't know how much money Tommy actually brought with him from New York. I'm not sure on that. How did she outpower him? Chop off his ear and had him on the ground. She couldn't even take a little rough up from Kane. I mean, you know. But we got to cut Monet some slack. She just had a Super Bowl performance. She just lost her son. There's a lot of stuff going on with her. So I, I can understand why season two was tough. You know what I'm saying? Dealing with all of that, you're supposed to leave the country, but then you got to perform for the Super Bowl. Your son died. Like, it's a lot on Monet's plate, man. We got to cut her some kind of slack now. Oh, no, we on this one. Damn. Wrong one. But like you said, you you're missing that relationship between Tommy and Ghost. That's what they're going to try to give us with Diamond and Tommy. You know what I'm saying? They both understand how it goes. And you see that they were both reminiscing about how the game used to be. You know what I'm saying? How the game used to be. Not how these young dudes are. And that's why he was trying to tell Diamond, don't have all these young knuckleheads. I mean, Diamond was trying to tell Jannar, don't have all these young knuckleheads around us. It's going to draw too much attention. Yeah, they'll do what you want them to do. But they're wild. Exactly, Barry. Exactly. He sees that Tommy came in. He didn't try to screw him over. All Tommy says, look, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make some money, whatever you can spare. And that's the good thing. When you can get to a point where you don't, you don't care how much you make, it's just anything coming in is better than nothing. That's where you want to be. So Tommy, Tommy, he's really out here. But if you pay close attention, Tommy was actually out there meeting his own connects. So everything that happened, 
them getting kidnapped and it working up. This is low key what Tommy was expecting. He wants to know where is it going to be the drop set? Where can I go? And when he got rid of Rojo's people, I don't even know what their names are. I was going to look them up in the cast, but I said, why? We're just going to continue to call them Rojo's people because they gone. They got one episode. Um, Power, if y'all get me on there, please. I know, I know it's a lot to ask, but please let me get more than one episode. At least on a 10, 10, you know what I'm saying, 10 episode series, let let your boy get three or four episodes. It could be minor roles, but come on, one episode, one episode, and he did Tommy bad, but ended up getting killed. Come on now. Did all that work. He put in work on Tommy Diamond just to end up flame broiled. <laughs> like whopper. Uh could Tariq bounce NY and link up with Tommy? Uh Miles, I don't think Tariq's gonna leave New York. For him, his ultimate goal is to take care of his sister and his mom. So I wouldn't see him leaving Chicago, especially what what's out there for them. You know what I'm saying? There would be it would be nothing out there for him to do. Now, if they stay in New York or even if they leave New York, probably move like down south or to California. But right now, I don't think he's going to do that just for the simple fact that they don't know what Tommy's doing at this point. We know he ran into Tommy at the end of his first season. Tommy could still be upset with Tasha for snitching because technically Tommy is on the run right now. You know what I'm saying? He's on the run for that murder. Like when Tasha got up there and testified, it was on Tommy. So he's really on the run now. I mean, he has legit plates and everything. <laughs> Brillo said the shirt was trash. <laughs> I don't know what it... That ain't... Uh, let me tell y'all something. I'm not sure if this is Versace or Fosace. F-O-Sace. You know what I'm saying? It's clean though, Brillo. It's clean. I could pull that off. You know what I'm saying? I could pull that shirt off. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I pull that off. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have it all the way up to the top. No, oh, no. We ain't going out like that. We gotta have that open it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Let that chest breathe. You can't have it all the way up to the top. Barry know what I'm talking about. That fake Versace. You can't even spell Versace. Yeah, I can. F O Sache. This is exactly how you spell it. Sachi. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Trash Hachi. Man, look, the, the only person that's living a regular life, no matter what they're doing, is Diamond. Now, Tommy, I've seen people clown on him. They were making memes. Tommy's been wearing that same outfit since 2014, that all black. Cause that's all you need when you're out here making moves in the streets. Rojo's is people they got on Fosachi. Diamond just got on a regular hoodie. But I'm sure if we looked that hoodie up, like, damn, okay, that hoodie about 950. He just wearing it around the city. Now, Tommy got, you know what I'm saying? He got put into this head of the young gentleman because he pulled a gun on him. But you seen what Diamond did. He's he seen what Tommy was about. He respected that and said, oh, no, don't don't do anything to Tommy. He's with me. So that's good. And that's how they went on this mission. I'm talking about it was a long day, too. They riding around the city, just reminiscing about how things are going. <laughs> now, the whole time they say in the block is hot. So we see a lot of police officers out here. They everywhere. They got the uh, helicopters out. Police just behind everybody. Of course, Diamond is nervous. People were asking, why is Diamond driving Tommy's car? That's because they got a time limit. They got to get all of this off before the end of the day. So, of course, you got to let Diamond drive. He knows exactly where we're going. Tommy's going to be like, do I make a left up here? Do I make a right? So, you know what I'm saying? You just got to. Let him drive. Now, it would have been better if Tommy was driving because Tommy did use his white privilege this episode. Yeah, I mean, I, I see y'all seeing Tommy. They think Tommy was dead. He's supposed to be in that explosion. 
but everything registers. So I don't know. I, don't, I mean, you know, it's power. It's fictional. I just like to dig a little bit deeper, you know, and try to bring real life into it. But any real cops would have looked at that and said, oh, man, this ain't no damn Tommy's body. He ain't blow up in this explosion. <laughs> Y'all not tricking me. <laughs> Y'all not tricking me. And that's the thing about TV. We always know they're going to give us some way to tie up the ends. Of course, they gave us the Tommy explosion. But he's still technically on the run. Because if he ever gets arrested, you have to understand, Tommy's been arrested before. Tommy's fingerprints are in the system. Once they catch Tommy and put him in the jail, it's going to all come up to it. So he's still on the run. That's why he had to fake his death. You know what I'm saying? I never said he wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I never said he was alive or dead. I just said Tommy is on the run. And technically he is. Oh, yeah, Kendall. You better believe Blanca would be on it. Now, I, I've i been looking at the cast listing to try to get a feel of who's going to be here. And... and Sometimes they said Blanca was going to be in this season also, but I'm like, how? When they in Chicago, I, I don't know. We gonna, we'll see. I know sometimes they just be putting stuff on there, but we'll find out. All we know is Jannara got arre uh, not arrested, but kidnapped also. And um, it went from having all day to meet the cartel's demands to <clears throat> y'all got one hour. <laughs> one hour. See, now Elijah... This is the main dude that works with right here. This was Janara's right hand man. This is the guy that's on the inside. He's going to hear all the business things going on. So originally, I thought that this was JP's son until I actually did a little research. So this is just Elijah. He's Janard's, you know, saying he's a, uh, how can I say it? He's Janard's Braden, put it like that. But only he's really in these streets. He ain't pretending. He really out here. I want to know, though, what's going to happen with this new plug. Well, the first one we got was the, the Hispanic lady. I didn't catch her name. If anybody knows the Hispanic lady's name, let me know what it is so I can, you know, say and address her properly. But when they got there, you see how Tommy set it up? He put it outside. <laughs> he told <laughs> he told Diamond, look, man, if I ain't out after you circle the block, you know what to do, right? Diamond said, yeah, man. He had his hand on the thing. He's like, yeah, man, you're right. <laughs> Drive off. Tommy's like, hell no, nah, man. Make another, <laughs> another lap around the block. Diamond was about to get the hell up out of here. We ain't gonna, we ain't just going to sweep that up under the rug, Diamond. Diamond said, man, shit, yeah, you're right, man. Let me, let me get up out the spot. <laughs> if Tommy wasn't out in 10 minutes, man, Diamond was about to go back to the barbershop, get some punches in, and wait for that cop. <laughs> Now, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. When he called her Tia in Spanish, Tia means auntie. So that's what he was saying. He said his Spanish wasn't that good, but he was calling her auntie. You know what I'm saying? When you, you'll hear him, because I always wondered, I was at the swimming pool when I was in Arizona. There's a lot of Hispanics down there. And I kept hearing the kids saying, Tia, Tia, Tia. And my brother had lived down there so long, you know, his Spanish is a little bit better than mine, but Tia means auntie, so that's not her name. Yeah, I don't I don't know if she has a name or not. Matter of fact, that's what I need to do. We need to dig it up and see how relevant is she going to be in the show because I'm thinking, you heard her, who do you work for? Tommy said, I'm a free agent. So this could potentially be one of his own connects, and that will work out for CBI. And that rolls over to what I'm, I'm seeing coming on with Claudia. If y'all seen the trailer for episode three, of course, we're going to talk about that at the end. Um, Curvin, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to see Diamond get any bodies, at least not early in the season. With him being out and we we need to see what the interaction between him and that Sheriff Bennigan is going to actually be. Now, that's going to determine how how Diamond actually moves in these streets. Now, he has his hands on with this because he's trying to save his brother. But once they get all of this settled and they start making, you know, saying some moves in the streets, 
I can see Diamond becoming more hands off and having Jannard do that, and he'll be negotiating him and Tommy. But I don't think we're going to see him catch a body anytime soon, just because he's he's too new out, and it, it really ain't worth going back. But in this case, he got kidnapped. He had to do it. They got his brother. They on FaceTime, so he had to really get out in these streets with it. And also, he was saving Tommy because Tommy helped him out by bringing back the drugs and money that they did have. But yeah, Diamond, uh, if Diamond catches a body, my prediction probably won't be until like the halfway point where they have their little mid-season break, but not not anything early. Because we didn't see Sheriff Bennigan at all this episode. So that means episode three, he's got to show his face at least once, either episode three or episode four, give Diamond a hard time. You know, you know how the show is. You got to build up. And right now, what they're focusing on is from the episode three trailer, it was building up in this episode with Claudia and the Flynn's with her wanting to actually have some more foot in the game. So we're going to get into that after we finish talking about uh, Diamond and Tommy. What's going up, Miss Zoe? What's going on now? I thought Reg from the shop was supposed to be in here. I think he is in here. I don't know. I don't know when he's going to show up. He might be. Somebody at CBI, they either get into it with, you know what I'm saying? You got, he could be, you know what I'm saying? He's a young black guy, so he could be another gang. We haven't seen CBI go against anybody. We've seen CBI teamed up with the Flins. We know that they're beefing with Rojos, but we haven't seen them with any other little street gangs. What up, Big Chill? What up, what up? Thank you for that, man. Let's hit that like button. We got 90 people in here. We working. I know it's a Monday. We're going to get back on Sunday, people. Happy Valentine's. You know what? All the men right now, close your ears because I'm only talking to the ladies. All of y'all are my Valentine's right now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no date. Y'all probably ain't got no date because y'all on here with me, and I love that. We here together. Happy Valentine's Day. All right, brothers. Y'all can open your ears back up. <laughs> but yeah tommy was smart had a drug outside because you don't know what's waiting for you on the inside you know what i'm saying you go in there you can easily this is your first time making an interaction with them you go in there you got the drugs pop it don't matter you don't know how how good they are with road hoses people so yeah you got to put that thing outside Oh, Fathaba, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know what I'm saying? That's my Valentine's, y'all. You know what I'm saying? She said any day of the year. Damn, that, that's a huge responsibility. 365 days, man. I don't even celebrate Valentine's. So you want me to get 364 more days on top of a day I already don't celebrate? Damn. All right. Well, you weren't on the stream last night, Miss Andrews, but I threw my $7 last night. I'm sorry. If you was in here last night, y'all know what I'm talking about. I threw my money last night. It's over with. <laughs> now, they coming up in this chop shop, though. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in here working, they got that thing on them. You know what I'm saying? You over here, you changing oil. You look you're like, damn, you got a gun on you? Changing oil? I just needed some, some washer fluid. You know what I'm saying? Some windshield washer fluid, and you got a gun on you? I don't, I don't know if I want my car serviced here. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be doing business in here. Y'all got guns on you. But I'm thinking it's more of a chop shop. When you come in, they got the old schools in there. When she went and got the money, that was a, what, was it a Lamborghini truck? I didn't even pay no attention to it. But she's looking at Tommy and asking, who do you work for? Tommy like, man, I work for myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, Diablo Don Julio de Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got a little bit of Spanish in me on that plaque back there. Let me tell you what it say. On the plaque, it say, the chairman of the Bio E4 Mafia. They called me Don Julio de Jesus El Jefe. That was my Spanish name when I was in Germany. <laughs> Kevin Tate, yes, sir. J Moore Reviews is playing role host, and he'll be on the show next Sunday. 
we were going to do it yesterday, but I knew with the Super Bowl, I wasn't going to be focused to be doing no two, three hours. So I'm going to have him on next week before he goes live. So I'll probably have him on maybe 15, 20 minutes. You guys can ask him some questions. I'm just going to ask him about, you know, how he, how does he like playing the role? And is he really Rojos? Is he really calling them shots? Or is there someone else calling the shots for Rojos? He said, that's a bad boy name. <laughs> uh, Miles, is power in L.A. next or overseas? No, nah, I think with the C-19, they just stopped it in Chicago. So Courtney Kim was talking about it. They're not going to move to any other cities because people were recommending moving down south. But it's still going to stick to New York. Uh, what they say? Oh, Tate, he's going to have his in New York if they go through with season five. Well, not season five, but book five. Tommy will be the only one in Chicago. Maybe Tommy will move once the, you know, the restrictions of recording and everything opens up. But right now, he's just in Chicago. So I definitely don't see him doing the overseas. I mean, who would who would be a character that could go overseas? Like, how would it spin off? There's no, like, main character that could spin off and do an overseas show. At least I don't think personally. Yeah. Yeah. You know it, Barry. Don Julio. De Jesus El Jefe. That was my name. You know what I'm saying? Say the whole thing. But anyway, we got the, the Spanish Connect now. They got the Chop Shop. You remember Tommy was like, I got a Mustang. She said, I don't give a damn about that Mustang. She wanted to handle business, and that's it. That's it. Tommy in there. Then who else we had? Oh, we had the next connect. Well, we know that Jannar got kidnapped. They were on his head. Tommy, Tommy and Diamond were having a good old time. And then you got that damn FaceTime call. You talking about, man, they got me, bro. They got me. I'm all right, though. <laughs> they got me, man. Jannar FaceTiming him. Like, come on, bro. They got you going out bad. Ain't no way they kidnapped me. I'm going out. Pop, pop, pop. They am like, here lies Mo. He tried. He tried. Miss Zoe said, I'm cooking some Spanish food right now. What are you making? What are you making? Some Spanish rice or some actual Spanish food? <laughs> Spanish rice. M. Martinez just described, always watched you and never did, but today I did. Let's go. Great job on the reviews. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I'm about to, you know what I'm saying, have a schedule come together where we have at least three lives a week because I want to be on here and interact with y'all more outside of the reviews. Because when I do the reviews and the recaps, let me tell y'all, it is complete boring. I watch the show. I get on here. I got to record. I'm like, damn, man. I'd rather just get on here and talk about it than actually sit down and record it so I can interact and see what you guys think. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to continue to do it each and every Sunday. Power reviews, recaps by your boy Mo. Thank you for that sub, though, Martinez. White rice and beans with beef tips. Okay, I see you. I see you on this fine Monday. I was going to say morning, evening. <laughs> but Janara got snatched up. And I told you, Tommy doesn't discriminate. Mm hmm. He went over here and he's serving everybody. It don't matter what religion. As long as there's some dollars involved, Tommy's involved. And that's what it's all about. Now, they in here, they running all kinds of tests on it. Talking about they in there, they doing a little test. Now, this is pure. It's going to turn a little bit purple. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it starts off when it first hits that chemical reaction. You know what I'm saying? But Diamond, he comes in. Tommy's in there. It's taking forever. And he already told Diamond, look, if I take too long, circle the block, come back. Diamond came in this time. He talking about, let me get two pounds of salami. or I mean, not salami, <laughs> pastrami. Two pounds lean. Y'all know how much pastrami that is? You got to be, you got to be having, I would ask him, first of all, before you order this two pounds, one, are you paying cash? And two, are you hosting an event? Because what are you doing with two pounds of pastrami with nothing else? You ain't got no cheese, no nothing. You just in here ordering two pounds of this. You about to just carry this and drop it off at the family house. Like, hey, here we go. We got food. 
<laughs> he turned around and said, two pounds, man? Are you sure you want two pounds of pastrami? We ain't never sold two pounds. When you buy pastrami, I mean, I've only been to a butcher like maybe twice in my life. Where I'm from, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to the butcher. We going to the grocery store. Renee, Renee, thank you. Thank you. Finally caught a live chat. Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. We just moved this one because of the Super Bowl. Uh, next week, we start Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. And then we're going to find that extra day where it's just a free night where we just talk. And I might do Mondays back for Euphoria. I actually got to record that tonight for y'all, whoever watches Euphoria. I know not a lot of y'all do. Y'all be on here talking power, but, you know, I do Euphoria also. Pretty good show. Testing it like they work for the CDC or the NIH. Took a long time. Yeah. I mean, they have they have better testing devices than that. But when you're on the street, if you're trying to get um, like a... What's the company? So while I was in the military, I was bioenvironmental engineering. So all of this, like what these drug tests are doing is they're testing, of course, the purity, but they're also testing the proteins in it. And the proteins will make the, you know, saying the chemical reaction change. So I used to test for anthrax, Ebola, all that. So what they're doing, it, it works. It's a long process, but you can get like a hazmat ID. You put a little bit in there, you drop the thing, put the sample on it. You got to put the little air in there. You got to put CO2 cartridges in there. Do that. It'll run it probably like two or three minutes, and it'll actually show you the levels compared to everything else. But, of course, they're not about to pay $300,000 for that type of equipment. So doing it this way is more efficient and <laughs> cost-worthy. Uh, Miss Andrews, Bel Air, episode one is up on my channel. Episode two will be up tomorrow. Episode three will be up Wednesday. And then I think they showed a show on thursdays each week it's either wednesday or thursdays whatever day it is the next day it'll be up so i do do bel air also my cousin i know i keep mentioning my cousin was the head barber on set the guy um mr cooper not hanging with mr cooper but the guy that actually shot it it was in kansas city where i'm from so my cousin actually helped put that together also so i do do bel air i just watched episode two um before i got on this live Fifty need to hop back on that treadmill, man. Fifty getting to the money. He ain't got no time to get on that treadmill. <laughs> if Fifty got on that treadmill, we wouldn't have these shows. Barry, it is a long process. It's a long process, especially for one brick. But you got to understand, if you're just buying one brick, this one brick better be the best damn brick that I got. <laughs> I better not be buying no dummy brick. I'm going to make sure that this brick is 100% because let's just say they getting them. This Chicago, they doing this for Rojos. They probably selling these things for about 15, 15, 17. No, nah, this, ain't, this ain't Young Jeezy days. A brick in Chicago right now is going to probably cost you about 25, 30. You know what I'm saying? The inflation went up. Getting it across the border is more security and stuff. So it's going to be 15, 30 thou for this. Because they gave, you got to remember, they gave Tommy 25000 and they only made three drops. They made three drops, and Tommy got 25000 So they selling these 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 bricks. Matter of fact, I got to up that price. They probably about thirty forty thousand. 40000 if Tommy got 25000 off of moving three bricks. We got one to the Hispanics, one to the Jewish people, and then one to the junkie. So that's three. If Tommy got 25000 we could just say 25000 times three is at least seventy five. So they not selling them for no 25 if they gave Tommy 25. That's giving him one brick straight up, and they still got to pay Rojos. So, yeah, they probably selling them about 40, 40 a piece. That's what we're looking at. 40 a piece to put us at what we sold, three of them, 90, 25 to Tommy. That means they got to probably keep 25 to split between. Nah, nope, 50, 50. They made 150 today if Tommy got 25%. Yep, they selling these things for 50. Shout out to Miss V, $5, man. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Hello, Mo, and everybody in the chat. I'm late to the chat. Hit the likes, y'all. Oh, and the Cash App, too. Thank y'all. You know, I don't ask for any money here. Donations are deeply appreciated. All I ask is when you come in, just hit the like button. That's all I ask for. I stay on here and rock out with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Tommy's out here selling them things for 50K. All I'm asking for is a like. Thank you again, Miss V. Thank you, thank you. 
Barry, you got to understand, though. You got to understand to get bringing it across the border. If you watch, go on YouTube and watch Vice and they'll they'll tell you how, like, everything is broken down. The people that are on the uh, on the farms, like in Colombia, and they're doing all of it for a pound, they might make like two or three dollars. And then once it goes, they do all of it. They do all to break it down. And once it goes from there, it'll go up to about like to make it to the main city. They'll start doing like a hundred, a hundred a key. Then from there to be boarded onto a plane and either took to the islands before it hops over. That's when it goes from like a hundred dollars a key to about five to 10,000, but then getting it to the border. Now that's where it jumps up to 20. Now, anywhere in Texas is going to be lower because it's right across the border, less risk, but to get it to LA Phoenix, because these are all the hubs, L.A., Phoenix, Houston, Dallas, uh, Miami. Those are going to be about the 30,000. But then you go up to Chicago, New York, all that. That's where it skyrockets because that's a lot. That's a lot. And then also you got to understand they working for row holes. At this point, y'all got an hour to get rid of everything. Y'all got to just sell it. Y'all got to make moves. But for Tommy to... Maybe they made more drops, but for Tommy to get twenty five thousand off of three drops and still have to pay row hosts and still get money for you and your people, come on, man! They gotta be making some kind of bread. They gotta be making some kind of bread. My math ain't that good off the top of the dome. Let me see. My math ain't that good. That means if Tommy got twenty five, that means they got eight k off of each one. So let's just say, if we're giving Tommy twenty five k. We're going to have to at least get 50. We're not going to get 25, and I got to break it down with the crew. You know what I'm saying? Why are we even talking about this? <laughs> Why are we even talking about this? Tommy made 25K off of three, you know what I'm saying, three drop-offs. <laughs> uh, shut, Dotto. I just left Columbia. Yeah, so I was supposed to be going down to Peru, uh, the first week of March, but they popped up on the list, so I'm not going. I was in Costa Rica in December. I was trying to hit up more, you know, saying Latin America, South American, and Caribbean places because I've never been there. I've always been in Europe and in Asia. <clears throat> Jennifer said, Did you bring drugs back? Hell no. <laughs> Bring drugs back. Hell no. I am in the state of California. Marijuana is legal. That's the only drug I do. And that's not even drugs. That just eases my mind. I drink a little bit of liquor. <laughs> Said that I bring drugs back. Hell no. Hell no. Stay off of that. The closest I get to drugs is right here on power and euphoria. That's the closest you're going to see me getting to anything serious. Like, nah. Shout out to Dara. She's in here. I'm going I'm to I'm impersonate her. Hey, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day to all the single fine ones in the chat just swinging through. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, when we get them by the metric ton, hey, they though, if you're getting them by the metric ton, you need to leave the chat now. <laughs> metric ton, get up out the chat now. Because anybody moving that kind of weight, there's all kinds of snitches involved in that. And there's no way this is getting moved without without and listen to me carefully in 2022 there's no way you're moving a, a metric ton without the feds being involved so hey no I don't, I don't know nothing about that i don't know nothing about that is rojos uh rojas just trying a way you can uh pronounce good sorry for correcting hey i mean that's just how i talk man i know y'all be correcting me on all the shows when i'm saying names and stuff rojas I just say Rose, <laughs> Rojos, Rojas. I don't like Rojas. I like Rojos. Hey. I'll take that in consideration, Martinez. I'm going to try Rojas. Rojas. I just hear Rojos and I just want to go with it. Uh, 
<laughs> hey, they know they calling you Lobos in here. <laughs> they calling you Lobos in here. You got a metric ton. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to understand man the way the way the world is now you're not moving that much without snitches being involved the feds being involved everybody everybody's got a hand in that there's no way that that's going down without people knowing <clears throat> what do i think tommy is going to do when he finds out about his nephew putting a gun on him uh we talked about d mac and and JP earlier, I don't, I think what Tommy's going to do as far as him finding out about his nephew, once he finds out of who his nephew is, I think D-Mac is going to have respect for him because he sees Tommy moving around and he didn't already worked his way up the ranks. D-Mac is just a corner boy working for Jannard. So him seeing Tommy, Tommy's going to do his best to be like, hey man, you need to talk to your dad. He ain't do nothing wrong. I know you may not agree with what he got going on in his personal life. You still need to talk to him. So I can see that happening. Nah, Barry, uh, nephew did. D Mac did pull a gun on him. No, uh, they're talking about um D Mac pulled a gun on Tommy. When they were in the when they were in the barbershop, he had a gun on uh on Tommy. And he actually did some talking. You know, I got the let me see. Where it at? So he was in there. He pulled a gun on Uncle Tommy. Because all three of them did when they were in the shop. So he back there. He he got the gun right there. And then he actually said something. I forgot what he said to Tommy. Yeah, see, he's there in the back. Let me see. Where the heck? I thought I had a picture of it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see, D Mac has a gun on him because him and Young Boy in the red, they both came in. They pulled that gun on him. So we did drop number two. I wonder what they did with that pastrami. Did he get that pastrami to Tommy to take back to the little warehouse with him? Because if I'm Tommy, you know, your stomach is rumbling. You just gave JP. $25,000. I'm taking that pastrami back home. I'm, <laughs> I'm tearing that thing up, man. I mean, this abandoned ass fire station with no heat in the middle of Chicago, all this snow on the ground. Forget that. Oh, Dara said all the uh all the fine single guys get at her. Go ahead, sub to her, you know what I'm saying? Her YouTube, you know what I'm saying? She be on there doing fashion hauls, trying on everything. So y'all can get y'all little peek in. <laughs> Maybe I missed it. What made JP grab a pistol? When did JP grab a gun? I can see him having a gun because the shop is getting shot. But I don't remember him actually grabbing a gun, though. If anybody can tell me what scene it was where JP grabbed a gun. I don't think I remembered, uh, uh, remember him grabbing a gun. I might be wrong. Hey, support gaming. What's going on, my brother? What's going on, brother? Oh, JP's son, not JP. So he had the gun. I mean, I know we already went over it, but you know, that's what y'all want. That's what y'all talking about. His son, this is his son right here with the gun in the original, you know what I'm saying? The first place that the, the club got shot up. So if you're looking at all the guns there, and then uh, where is it at? When JP was talking about his son, when they were at the house, he was talking about his son. They showed, they showed D Mac outside. Man, where is it at? Do I got? I... They show him outside here with the bandana on, with him also putting, uh, like taking the silencer off and putting it in the box and looking at the picture of his dad. So he knows who JP is. You see what I'm saying? He got the gun there. He's putting it in a little box with the picture of uh with 
with the picture of his dad in there. So he knows what his dad looks like. I don't know why he's doing everything. He could just be upset, you know. A scorned single mom telling her, your daddy ain't shit. Your daddy ran away from us. Whole time she left him. <laughs> he was trying. <laughs> he said, my <laughs> he said, my husband. Tommy said, no, oh, man, I don't care, man. We just getting some money. <laughs> oh, well, you said, will he get into some gunplay? Uh, JP, I don't know. He might. I could see, you know what they could do? They could put a twist on it where, how can I put it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell y'all the script, what I would do, you know what I'm saying, to rekindle the relationship between um, young boy D-Mac and his pops. He finds out that Tommy is his uncle. Now he got respect for Tommy. Tommy's been trying to tell him that your dad is cool. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't look at your dad that way. You know what I'm saying? Actually talk to him. Now, I can see JP getting a gun and saving D-Mac. Say D-Mac gets into it or something, JP saves him. Now we're saying, you know, I was always there for you, son. I wanted to be there, but your mom took you away from me. You know, whatever I got going on personally shouldn't, you know, saying shouldn't change that I'm your father and I love you. And that would bring them closer and eventually get D-Mac out the game. That's what I would do. But then again, I'm thinking if we, if, if we watch Empower, we want some action. We don't want all that lovey-dovey. No, 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 no. We want JP to have to, you know what I'm saying? Get rid of D-Mac. That's what we want to see. <laughs> That's what we want to see. They get into it with each other. JP has to save his life because D-Mac is upset. So, you know what I'm saying? That's what power is about. That father-son relationship and the father exerting that dominance. <laughs> That's what we looking for. Hey, look at y'all. Y'all playing matchmaker in here. Dari, are you are you the, the, the tender swindler? <laughs> hey, but look, we got 115 people in here. I'm about to give me another drink. Please hit that like button, and I'll be right back in like two minutes. Not even two minutes. Probably like 37 seconds. I'm going to run, too. You know, like when you was a kid, you used to try to turn the light off and run and get there before the light goes off. That's what I'm about to do. I'm going to hit this refrigerator up. Y'all hit that like button for me. I'll be right back. And I'm watching y'all, too. I got it on my cell phone. So when I'm in that kitchen, I can see what y'all doing. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't play me. <laughs> I'm on y'all side. Yeah, I'm doing this for y'all. Mm-hmm. What we got in here? Mm-hmm. Y'all thought I was about to be gone for a long time, huh? No, we back. We're back at it. Darkwing Duck. Hey, Darkwing Duck. Hey, that used to be my show. Afro Soka Love 30% off. Then I ain't about to buy nothing. How I get all these random ass text messages? I'm not buying nothing off your site for no Valentine. Where y'all get my number from? I'm over here trying to get in the game with Tommy and y'all talking about spending money on Valentine stuff. Vic gonna set Tommy up. Um, I know him and Tommy, they're gonna have their issues, they're gonna have their beef. In the trailer, though, we see him say when it comes to business, they can put their differences behind, you know, saying behind them. Now, that's only going to go so far. And then eventually, of course, they're going to have to get into it. It's inevitable. We got to have Tommy versus the Flins. Who will win that? I don't know. I mean, it is Tommy. So we know Tommy's at least going to get two seasons. So unless Vic gets them at the end of the season, I mean, they could do that. They could have Vic, in order to end all of the spinoffs, Tommy to lead the show, they could have Vic set them up at the end. You know what I'm saying? That could be like at the end of season two, end of season three. That's just a, you know, I don't, if a show ends, I really don't believe in a, I don't like the happy endings when it comes to shows, you know? 
whenever I watch movies, I'm usually for the villain, the evil guy, you know? That's what I want to see. Yeah, he said only soft ends beef over the P word, Tupac. Yeah. But he also said, first off, mm hmm, F the click that you claim, uh, F your wife. So you was bringing in women in the beef pot. Come on, man. Can't contradict yourself. RIP to a legend, though. That's neither here or there. <laughs> when he was young, you know what I'm saying? When you're young and making that money, you acting like Tariq out here. Thank you, Miles. Miles Bachelor. Leave the happy endings for Disney Plus. When we watching this, we want that we want that killer. We want that action. That's why I said if it was up to me, you know what I'm saying? I would have JP get rid of DMAC. It wouldn't be like he just does it to do it, but it would be more JP trying to protect himself because his son keeps doing something. Like say, say DMAC and them came to do it again. This time JP was there and he pop, pop, pop killed his son he's like damn man i didn't want to do it man but you had to <laughs> support said fun fact if you say tommy's name three times he would show up at your house the funny thing is i don't say no man three times you know what i'm saying i don't say no man's name three times if i say it the first time then if it's in that same sentence i'm gonna say old oh boy or old buddy or something or the n-word <laughs> nigga yeah, I'm not gonna say no man's name three times. <laughs> Unless it's Candyman. Now, I do Candyman in the mirror three times. Pause. <laughs> Mo is about to drop a big dump. <laughs> a big dump of what? <laughs> See, Monique King, you on my page. I always go for the bad guy. It's just it's just something about the bad guy because it throws you off. When you're watching a show, you you nine times out of ten, you know, oh, man, the good guy, he's going to save the day. You watch a Batman. Oh, he about to whoop somebody's ass. He's going to win. Superman, he's going to win. Spider-Man, he's going to win. But shoot, if the bad guy wins, then what? Then what? Like when Thanos won in uh, the Avengers, I said, damn, I hate watching these superhero movies. I hate all this fake crap. But damn, Thanos is a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? That's a bad dude. He reminded me when I was like 16, 17. You know what I'm saying? I was ripping and running the streets. <laughs> now, how Ghost went out, I don't want nobody to go out like how Ghost went out. That, that ending was trash. But, but in other cases, I agree with the evil guy winning. Because when you think about it, I know this is off topic. Y'all know how I can get in my rants. I'm going to get back on track. I just got to get this off my chest. But we got all these superheroes. We got Spider-Man. 25 different Spider-Mans. We get a new Batman every year. Iron Man is gone. We got all these heroes in the world ain't never safe. Why do we even have heroes? Batman only protects Gotham City. Batman, there's a whole world out here, and you can't protect Gotham City. Every year, we got a new villain up there, so obviously, niggas ain't scared of Batman. Ain't nobody scared of the Avengers. Like, that's why I don't really get into that stuff. But, you know, that's just me. Like, man, this is stupid. <laughs> Who was we talking about? Oh, we was talking about that damn two pounds of pastrami that they got. What else happened after that? Oh, yeah, they went and got Jannar back. Oh, yeah. Well, the difference, though, the difference about James Bond, James Bond isn't a person. 007, James Bond 007 isn't a person. It's an alias. So you can replace that. That's just an agent. That's why it's called 007. He's the seventh agent. So you can replace him. Once he's gone, you just put somebody else in that. You see what I'm saying? James Bond isn't the same person. He works at MI6, and that's just a name, just like MIB. That's where they got all that play from. MIB, you can just replace people with that that letter for their name. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Once K is gone, you got to bring in someone else to replace K. Once the seventh agent is gone, a.k.a. James Bond, you just replace him. So that's different. Yeah, that's just an agent. But I, I, I get what you're getting at, yeah. The only reason I knew that is because I had a... Um, I had one of my professors was British 
when I went to the University of Maryland. And I don't know why he got on talking about it. But yeah, James Bond 007 is an agent. It's not an actual person. So they can replace those. And that's why they were pushing to try to have Idris Elba be one of the James Bonds. But then, shout out to Idris Elba. No, nothing person against him, but that nigga can't act, in my opinion. Businessman, hell of a businessman. Can he act? I really not trying to see him in that. <laughs> James Bond never dies. They multiply like ghosts. Yeah, James multiplied. He multiplied three times, and two of them are pretty much gone. I'm talking about Reyna and Yaz is pretty much done. She ain't about to be in the game. She just got to suffer all the consequences. Yeah. Well, actually, not only do all super, uh, superhero movies pretty much have that same storyline and plot, all movies do. You know, it starts off, you either starting off in a down moment or a regular moment. Then you're going to reach your peak. You're going to have your little dilemma. You're going to have to have an antagonist go against them. It's either you defeat them or you lose to them at first. Then you'll reach that high point And you either nine times out of 10, they try to have you with the happy ending. So that's why I say when you watch shows, I'd rather see the villain win because it was unexpected, you know? And for me, that's what I want to see. I don't want to be able to predict what we're about to watch next. What the hell happened? Oh, okay. They meet. They met the Jewish people. See, we over here talking about anything, but you know it pertains to power, and I love that. That's what I say, man. When I get on these lives with y'all, it's just easy to get on here, talk about whatever, and then we get right back to the topic. So they drop this off. Tommy gets twenty five thousand dollars for a day's work of work, but before it end, you pulling up in the most scariest situation I bet Tommy has ever been in, other than. Other than Lobos getting on them, this would probably be the, the worst moment that I could picture Tommy being in. Like, these aren't Mecca's guards. These aren't Mecca's guards who are just sitting in the warehouse. Oh, boss, we getting we getting robbed. No, 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 no. Wherever they at in this auditorium or movie, abandoned movie theater, they got the beams on them. And they already know Diamond ain't that much of a threat. They heard that there's a, a crazy white guy in the city, so they put two of them on, on Tommy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they put two of them on Tommy. This is probably the worst situation Tommy has ever been in. One, because they got distance on them. And they ain't playing around. They ain't doing no talking. It's like, all right, this is far enough. <laughs> far enough. Jannara coming out looking like this. Talking about, man, I'm good. I'm good. Man, you ain't good. Got that Fendi jacket on. My boy got the, see, this is a Versace jacket, F-O Versace jacket, so it's zipped up. I thought it was a button-up, and we were all calling it a shirt, so it was actually a jacket, okay? It's a lightweight jacket. I might go put on my shirt, you know what I'm saying? That's what we doing? That's what, I might, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no one else doing outfit changes while they on live. You know, I might go do one real quick. Oh, I forgot. I forgot all about the dealer in the crack house where um, we can talk about it after we get Jannard back. As long as Jannard is safe, that's it. But yeah, they come out here and of course they got that money. That's what it's all about, man. Never get yourself in a situation where you owe somebody money, man. If you, I recommend you never borrow money from anybody. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you do take out a loan from like the bank or something, and pay that thing off, but don't borrow money from anybody. You don't want to ever have to owe somebody because that's the worst thing ever. Waking up knowing that they could potentially get on your ass one day if you owe them some money. I'm talking about people are going out for five dollars, ten dollars. Man, let me hold a dollar. You know what I'm saying? That's a crazy thing. When you used to be back in high school, now nah, I won't even say high, yeah, even high school. Hey man, let me borrow a dollar, man. Go buy a pop. Where I went to school with, man, niggas get to fighting the next day. I'm talking about 7 30 in the morning. Hey man, you got that dollar you owe me? No, I mean I ain't got it. I got you tomorrow. Pa, pa, pa. They're like, damn. Now I can only imagine how much bread they didn't broke off to them. I'm gonna try to look in this bag, you know, saying I can eyeball the work. Not the work, y'all I mean the money. The money. I can eyeball money. You know what I'm saying? Let me see how much bread they got in here. Tommy got 25000 All right. Look like one, two, three bundles at, at least. At least it's hundreds. I know they ain't got them in no thousand wrap bundles. Probably got them in five thousands. 
yeah let me see this definitely ain't no thousand this ain't no thousand bundle right here this is probably about five thousand maybe ten a hundred bills mm, maybe ten thousand so they probably got about a hundred 150 in there y'all thought i was talking y'all thought i was talking when i said they were selling these things for about 40 50 thousand if tommy made 25 off of three drops so that bag probably got about 150 now if you've seen i don't know how many people comment put a one in the chat if you've seen at least a hundred thousand in cash put a one in the chat let me see if anybody's seen that because that bag had at least 150 almost 200 in it especially the size of that bag and it was full because if the bag wasn't full watch this if it wasn't that if this bag wasn't full like that it wouldn't be money just sitting at the top like that duffel bag is pretty damn big you know what I'm saying? So if you look at this duffel bag with all this money, like, look how big this bag is. If there's money sitting up at the top like this where the zipper is, that means this thing is full. It's about 150, 200 in there. Hey, Barry said in the UK, y'all, yeah, y'all use pounds, pences, you know what I'm saying? We, we do all of that. You know what I'm saying? We do all of that. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Barry, tell the queen, tell the queen, you know what I'm saying? Hold on. Let me see what we got here. We got the new queen, you know what I'm saying? We got the old queen, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't even know who this is. I don't know if this is the new queen. I mean, the queen. I don't know who the hell it is. But, you know, we got the new bill. We got the old. You know what I'm saying? We got the new. We got the old currency. We do all that. We we well travel. I love the UK, man. Them pounds be them pounds be breaking my account, though. I went over there. I took out 300 pounds one day. I checked my account. This shit said, like, 550. I'm like, damn. Damn. <laughs> Hey, if y'all ever get a chance, go over to the UK, London, do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got the old money. I got the old money. I got the new money. But every country we go to, we collect. We collect. You know what I'm saying? We collect. Every country you go to, you gotta, you gotta bring back some bills. You gotta, you gotta celebrate being over there. You know what I'm saying? This is from, you know what I'm saying? Oman. Let me see. Thailand, or oh, we got, we got more, almost every bill of Thailand. You got the twenty bot, you got two fifty bots. Oh, why is this here? This ain't. You got Poland. You know what I'm saying? About two hundred dollars in Poland. You know what I'm saying? What else we got? Uh, uh, Croatia. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of Croatia money. I've been in Croatia several times. We got Croatia. Let me see. Colonies, you know what I'm saying? Costa Rica. You know what I'm saying? You gotta always bring whenever you travel somewhere, bring you back some money. You know what I'm saying? Small faces. <laughs> Miles says small faces. Do I have Euro? Come on now. I lived in Euro. I lived in Europe. I got hold on. Where the where the Euros at? Uh hold on. Hold on. I might not have the Euros in this one. Cause I got in euros, I got the, I got a hundred euro, I got the five hundred euro, I got a twenty euro. Matter of fact, I got a small euro that was tore up. My first uh, currency I got when I was over there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I've been to every country, every country in Europe except for Bulgaria, Bulgaria, Finland, and uh Czechna, Slovakia. i haven't been there either oh in turkey uh aud yeah i got i got it hold on Shit, here go dubai here uae uh the aud hold on which one is this Oh, uh, this is UAE. Oh, 
Well, I mean, most of Europe is all of them. I gotta find it. I got a whole bunch of it. But every country I go to, you know, I say I try to I try to get like at least a hundred dollars worth, unless, you know what I'm saying, depending on the country. Like when I go to, to Thailand, you know, and you go over there, you go take out like ten thousand dollars. It's only like three hundred or well, ten thousand kuna, it's only like three hundred dollars. But you know what I'm saying? I when it when everything opens up, y'all travel, but there's definitely at least 150. 200k in here may even be more you know what i'm saying get that passport people get that passport uh princess jasmine how's it going i ain't seen you in here in a minute you said you a night out huh uh, German food is all right. German food is all right. It just depends on what you get. Uh, Kevin, France is nice. So from where I live, I can hop on a train from Trier, Germany, and I can get to, well, actually, the border of France from where I lived, it was really only an hour. So I used to drive over to France. I had, um, there was a guy that he didn't work with me, but he was on base, so he knew French, so we would go over there. But yeah, Paris was only a three-hour three hour drive. I mean, not a three-hour drive. It was a four-hour drive. It was like a two-hour train ride. Their food is good there, too. Uh, if you guys are picky on your food, make sure you like look at TripAdvisor. Yeah, TripAdvisor when you go overseas. Yeah, I got IG, Barry. It's uh, Mo.J. M-O-E-D-O-T-J. Now, if you go back like two or three years, you'll see my travels. Right now, it ain't my Instagram is trash, man. I don't really be on there, man. I'd rather get on YouTube. <laughs> Support Gamer said, plot twist, Tommy gave them fake cash. Now, that would be something. They would be back on them if that was the case. Yeah, that would end all bad for them. Oh, uh, y'all asked that I have any euro. Yeah, so this is my first bill I had a euro. It tore it on my pocket. So I got that in the in the five. But a lot of my euros I spend because I you know say I go over to Europe a lot. So how recent have you been to the UK? You got them fresh five and ten notes. The last time I was in the UK uh was july july 2019 i went over there i went to wireless festival i stayed in the city for two weeks then i went out to croatia for a week and i came back for five days before i left so i go to the uk often i actually was looking for a job over in the uk i have a homeboy that stays in uh peterborough and i'm sure y'all know where peterborough is like an hour north but Yeah, so I go to I go to before the pandemic. I went to Euro all the time. I lived in Germany from 2013 to 2017 in December, and then every summer I go to Europe for at least a month. So it'd be about a week and a half, two weeks in London, and then the rest, the rest of the month, to be traveling throughout Europe. Uh, Kevin, I was in the military when I lived in Germany. So when I was uh. That was my first time actually going overseas. I got stationed in Germany. I lived there for four years, so I did a lot of traveling. But once I got out in 2017, every year I just always go back. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a disabled veteran. So let's just put it like that. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I do a lot of traveling. Ruth said, join the military. You can travel for free. Technically, you can. You can fly for free also. You just got to get on a waiting list. But if you luck up and get stationed overseas, then it's easier. Because once you get to Europe from here, I know we just ain't got nothing to do with power. <laughs> but once you get to Europe, then the flights is cheap, man. I could fly from Germany to the UK for like on Ryanair for like $100 round trip. If you book it out, I go to Barcelona. I go to Ibiza. I went to Morocco. I went to Egypt. 
it none of them flights were more than like 200 300 dollars even the flight from germany to dubai i spent for a round trip it was 425 Yeah, Peterborough is the country, but I got a homeboy that lives up there because he, um, the base that he works at. So, of course, you got Lake and Heath and Milton Hall up there, but Peterborough is next to, um, damn, what's his base called? It's a very, very small base. It's like a joint base with the UK, the Royal Air Force. But I love the UK, man. I love the UK. Yeah, Ibiza is crazy partying, but you got to understand, when I first got over there, Germany, I was what, 2013, I was, I was 28, 28, my first time going to Ibiza, I was, yeah, I was still 20, I haven't turned 29 yet, I only went to Ibiza once, I went to Ibiza, and then what's the other little uh, island next to it, Mallorca, I went to Mallorca. Oh, no, nah, Princess Jasmine. I never made it to Birmingham. So when I would travel, I would only be able to get to like, I would go to London because I had my boy. He would just meet me down there, hop on the uh, the express. He'd come down to London. We hang out. I always wanted to go to Birmingham. To all my fellas in here, if you get a chance, make it to the UK. Trust me. You won't be disappointed. Beautiful women over there also. And they speak English. You ain't got to worry about, a, uh, you know, saying a language barrier. And they treat Americans good. You go over there. No lie. How <laughs> you see how Diamond is offering this money to him. We went out. To, uh, we went out to eat one morning, me and a couple of my boys. And we were joking around with the guy. He's like, OK, he gave us our, you know, saying our. <laughs> he gave us our tab. And I looked at him. I joked. I was like, oh, man, I left my money at the hotel man. I'm going to get you later. He was like, oh, man, just whenever the next time you walk by. You know what I'm saying? Just bring the money. I'm like, damn, y'all really trust people like that over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Barry, I might be coming over there. You know what I'm saying? Once once all these restrictions live, I'm going to be traveling. So, you know what I'm saying? If y'all in the UK, hit me up. Matter of fact, Barry, hit me up on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? We need to link up because I got a homeboy over there. You know what I'm saying? We can talk about some things. Princess Jasmine, what part of the UK are you from? Well, why we talk about all this? Let me finish up with Tommy. Now. You know what I'm saying? Tommy got $25,000 talking about, hey, man, anything's better than, than nothing. I'm just here trying to make some connects and make some money. Now, they did save Jannar. Jannar is whooped on. Of course, he's going to wonder, what, what the hell is going on with you and Tommy? You know what I'm saying? Why are you hanging around this white boy? In reality, this white boy is the one that helped you. Because we've seen Jannar. That's another thing. I wanna, I'm going to make a video this week because Jannar... He low key Hayden. He reminds you of um, Cameron when he played Rico. Look at him. He didn't want to hear what Tommy had to say about anything. Did y'all notice that? Did y'all notice that? He's over here. He's looking at Tommy like, man, what the hell, man? I don't like this white boy. Well, hey, calm down. This white boy is going to save your life. You know what I'm saying? Them Cubans, they might come up off you a little bit later on. Oh, the Netherlands. I love the Netherlands. Tracy, I've been there like three, four times. I got arrested, though, New Year's Eve going from 13 to 14. That's a whole nother story. But they cool. They let me out the next morning. They ain't, you know, they ain't press no charges. I hopped on the train. Now, I hopped on the train. I had a, you know what I'm saying, I had a book a last minute trip from, um, from Amsterdam down to Germany. Shit, that shit was like 400 euro, but... <laughs> Sean, uh, Sean said he got the little brother syndrome, just want control and don't want to give it back. Well, I don't think it's that he doesn't want to give it back. I think he respects his brother and he understands what's going on. It's more of he wants the young dudes to show that, hey, I'm still in charge, even though my brother's home. Because I everybody knows who Diamond is. If they with Jannard, they know who his brother is. Your brother went to jail. He held it down. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, though. I agree with that. He doesn't want to lose that control. Because when Diamond said, put your guns down, everybody was like, man, he calling the shots. But in reality, he knows, like, my brother's in charge. I just want to keep these young dudes up under me. So I agree with you on that. Um, See, everybody's asking me about the, the football. So I, 
I'm not going to lie to you. When I was traveling at that age, I wasn't really into like doing the sightseeing. I probably drive by, you know, I seen the O2 and everything. I actually wanted to do the OT where you can, uh, what's it called? Where you scale over the top of, I wanted to do that, but it was like too windy. The one of the days that I was trying to go, I never went to any football games. Um, I forgot who told me I need to become a United, a Manchester United fan. That's what they told me yesterday. They told me I need to, you know, saying get a couple of jerseys. He said, get the away jerseys, but I want that light blue that they wear. Renee said he didn't want to tell his young boys to put the gun down. No, he didn't. That's why he even pulled his gun out. He's like, man, forget it. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, he he knows his brother is still in charge and everything. He just wants these young ones to know that, hey, you still got to respect me. Because if they see that Diamond is actually the one in charge, you know what I'm saying? Because they were like, is he calling the shots? Because so long, he's been doing it for the last 15 years. Of course, with these young dudes, he probably only been in charge of them for maybe about D Mac is what 16. So Elijah, I probably put him at 18, 19 years old, maybe 20. He probably only been over them for maybe like two or three years. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, they didn't want to, you know what I'm saying? They didn't want to put that thing down, did they? <laughs> Hey, Barry, I don't know nothing about no football, man. They would just ask me, you know what I'm saying? You should become a Manchester United. Yeah, I didn't know I had this many people from the UK that actually watched me, man. Now y'all getting on me. I don't I don't know the culture, people. All I know is I go over there, I have a good-ass time. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's all I know. That's all I know. <laughs> go over there and have a good time. <clears throat> Yeah, if you're talking about me, Barry, I got a, I got an Instagram, M O E D O T J. Yeah, man, I'm a like y'all looking at a real road man. That's what they. I go over there like, oh, road man, yeah, road man, yeah, mate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get a Liverpool football shirt, man. I'm gonna have to check out those, man. I didn't know I had this many people. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and I watched Top Boy. I watched the first two seasons of Top Boy. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Hold on. I got a um I got a homegirl. Damn, what what city did she live in? I don't know if you guys call it cities or towns. I don't know. I just call that shit a city. I mean, look, look, hey, man, forget that football stuff, man. A majority of the people in here don't watch no damn football. <laughs> I'm going to give me a couple of the shirts, though. All right, Barry, I got you, bro. I got you. Uh, Damn, I'm trying to find. Let me see if y'all know this place real quick before we continue on about Tommy and his little bros. I'm trying to make something happen. Now, JP is his older brother, but. uh, Damn, what is this place called? Not Cambridge. I know y'all know what Cambridge is. Uh, Ipswich. Y'all know where Ipswich is? Lips, not Lipswich, but Ipswich. Y'all know where that is? I got a homegirl that lives over there. I went to that stadium because her little brother played for him. Ipswich. Who we got next, though? Oh, we got the, the Flynn family. We got the Flynn family. Now, we did a little breakdown about them, though. Because we already seen that, you know what I'm saying? They out here, and it looks like looks like Walter might be a little sick. You know what I'm saying? Walter might be a little sick because he's already telling, hey, Vic, we're going to need you to take over. But you got to run it the way I want you to run it. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I'm going to do a live where we just talk about, you know what I'm saying, some international stuff. Uh, I'm not sure. Now, I know his doctor said that you asked him, does he have cancers? Uh, I'm not sure. His doctor was saying they need to look at more things. But it's kind of like the same thing that we've seen with uh, Theo and, and Davis. We didn't really get the full spectrum of what he has. It's just, all right, he's sick. And then another thing on top of that, he's sick. 
he's supposed to be taking these meds, but he's taking it with straight scotch. Like, hey, bro, you I don't think you need to be drinking scotch when you're taking this meds, bro. Now, I know I can drink and take an ibuprofen because, you know what I'm saying, all it's going to do is speed up that process so I can wake up no hangover. Don't do that, people. But in this case, whatever he's taking, hey, you don't need to be drinking no liquor with that, Pops. Like, come on now. I don't I don't think that's the smartest idea now. I'm not I'm not a doctor or anything, but it, dad, I don't you know what I'm saying? I don't think you should be drinking. <laughs> Pops over here getting towed up. Yeah, he is Irish. So when I was originally listening to it, when we got the exclusive clip, it wasn't the same as actually listening to the actual show. So I couldn't hear what he was saying. I thought he was talking about a dude named Avram. And I went in a whole little spill and I was a thousand percent wrong with that. And I apologize to y'all. But that was me. I couldn't hear it. I was trying to break it down. But he was talking about some dude named Avram. He said in IRA, which is Ireland's initials. And then he said over in Ireland, this is how they want it ran. That's me. That's me. And you better off getting him to stop drinking. He's not gonna put down that cigarette. That's one thing he ain't gonna do. <laughs> That's one thing he ain't gonna do. Oh, uh, Barry, you said it, which is a town. Okay. See, I didn't know what the difference is between a town and a city, but yeah, I've been to it, which uh, it's which. It's hard to pronounce, man. The way I talk, it's just hard, man. I'm sorry. I try my best. Hey, which one is you, uh, Barry? This Alpo? Alpo 258? Or is it Wi-Fi the plug? <laughs> but we see that he's trying to set up his son to get him to take over the organization. You know? Getting him to take over the organization. Um... You said it's Flynn only in three episodes from the from the cast. And I've seen that it only had him, uh, Vic and Claudia listed in three episodes. But if they leave, then we're not going to have, you know, someone to go against Tommy. So I'm thinking they're going to probably be in here for the whole season. Also, when we break down season three, tra I mean, episode three's trailer, we'll see that it looks like Claudia. Is going to do exactly what I was predicting and, you know, saying start to make some moves behind her pops back and link up with Tommy. Oh, damn. My bad, Miss V. My bad. I apologize. I apologize. See, we got so carried away with the international stuff. We forgot. Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? Oh, there we go. We forgot there was a third drop off. There was a third drop off. We had the Hispanic. We had the Jewish, and then we had the junkie. And then we'll get back into the Flynn's. I'm sorry. My bad, y'all. My bad. That's on me. I told y'all I get on them rants, and we start talking about everything but what we're supposed to be talking about. And I need to, man, let me see something. I'm going to adjust my camera after it. When Tommy goes to make this third drop, he goes in here, and this is a junkie. But if you watch Tommy closely, when he went in here, he already knew there was a potential for danger. I don't know if any of y'all noticed that, but what did he do? He locked the door. He don't want anyone coming in here because, okay, one is a trap house. This is where all the junkies are. So you want to make sure that you're safe and no one can come behind you. So he locked that door. Very, very smart move. Because if not, you don't want to have your back to it. You can easily think that this is a setup. The police could be watching. So at least if they do try to come kicking in the door, they, you know, saying they got to put in some work. So he locks the door. But when he comes in, everybody leaving and stuff, you know, it's stinking here. Look at this place. You know, it's funky in here. They got these dim lit lights. Where, where do you even. They saved up their money to go buy red lights to put in here. Think about that. That's what these junkies do. They're like, you know, what? I'm going to save up some money so it isn't too bright in here. I'm going to buy some red lights and put the red lights up in here. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna we gonna set the mood off you know what i'm saying when we get high we gonna set the mood you know what i'm saying that's what we gonna do we gonna set the mood let me get right you know what i'm saying what the junk you got
There we go. We're gonna we're gonna set the mood because this is how this is how the junkies are in there. You know what I'm saying? We got we got the red light at you know what I'm saying? coming in here. This is the vibe. This is the vibe. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Woo-wee. We in here. Let me see what you got, Tommy. Let me let me see that. Let me see that brick you got. You know what I'm saying? Let me see that brick you got. Oh, I can't dim. I'm not dimming the lights. Y'all trying to get too intimate. See, it's Valentine's Day. If I start dimming the lights, y'all gonna get the wrong idea about this channel. We talking about power right now. And it talk about dim them lights, Mo. No, no, that's not what we doing. No, we're not dimming no lights. Mm -mm. Then y'all gonna be like, oh Mo, man, your channel different now. Like, oh, no, no, no. That, that's Anna that wanted to light them. We just trying to set the environment for for the junkie. We trying to sell these bricks. <laughs> Barry said they're energy saving lights. But yeah, I just noticed that. Like, man, y'all, this is what y'all did. You know what, man? Today, man, I'm going to take my... Look, man, I'm, I'm going to save my $5. I'm going to go buy some lights, man. Some energy efficient lights, man. Some red ones. Red is set the mood in here. Mm. So they got all this. <laughs> Danielle said, "What did Drew say?" Hey, look. After the dude, after the dude brushed that brick down, hey Danielle, this is what happened. He went in there. Tommy's like, "All right, man, do your little test." And he went in there. <laughs> Straight to sleep. <laughs> Hey man, he hit that bump and was knocked out. That means he had to be on something else, or this is that pure cocaine. We already seen the Jewish testing and talking about damn, these levels are high. So for him, they ain't been making no, <laughs> they ain't been making no real money. So for this dude to be buying a brick, first of all, I want to know who the hell is he if he had this kind of money to buy a brick. You know what I'm saying? We not just gonna gloss over that. Who is this junkie that had enough money to buy a brick? Not buying a little dime, not buying a 20 sack. You know what I'm saying? This man bought a brick. A whole brick. What kind of junkies are these? This man must have owned a hedge fund or something. He got laid off. You know what I'm saying? The pandemic shut him down. He's like, man, I still got some bread. I'm going to get high. I may not give me a house, but I'm going to get high. Where did this man get this from kendall talk about mo at the dark dog mo at the dark nothing not with these junkies on the loose i'm over here dimming the lights my door ain't locked you know what I'm saying i go over there dim the lights come back over here somebody hit me in the back of their head and it'll be all y'all fault <laughs> tommy said man do your test man he said i'm gonna do a test all right I'm gonna do a test with this motherfucking right nostril. He's like, <laughs> hey, look at his face, man. You know it's hot as hell in there. Even though it's cold outside, it's hot as hell in here. They ain't been doing nothing but getting high. It was like three or four people that left. Oh my God. He took that bump. Look at him. He like, Oh man, I'm talking about he hit that thing harder than Rue does in Euphoria. If y'all watch Euphoria, you know Ruby hitting them drugs hard. This man hit that with a knife. He talking about Ooh. hey, that hit so hard he didn't even get a chance to do it. He hit that thing. All you heard was this is exactly how he did. Man, that thing took him out quickly. Tommy's looking at him like, hey, bro. <laughs> Like, right now, Tommy's thinking this is a setup. Like, man, hey, bro, I told you not to take no damn bump. Do do a regular test. Because Tommy, just he just like me. I'm looking at it. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going into a trap. You know what I'm saying? We're in the trap. Let me lock the door. It's got to be somebody in the back or upstairs. You know what I'm saying? Some dude that's decent looking. Probably just smoking like some weed or something. Got a security with him that's buying these bricks. It's a whole junkie out here, like a legit junkie. And we got we got this dude right here knocked out, too. You already can't trust him. I would already have my thing. Like, I would have had my hand in the jacket. 
with that thing on that steel because I don't know what the hell going on. And either I can be able to boom, boom, boom through the jacket, especially for this one sleepover year, or I could pull that thing out and get the pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm thinking going in here, especially with these red lights. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Uncut said <laughs> that Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown types. <laughs> Chill, man. <laughs> Hey, Uncut Darnell, you a fool for that one. I mean, Daryl, my bad, but I'll say it, Darnell, because I was thinking of the dude on the show, man. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Dog, I would have came in here and said, oh, no, man. You got to go meet me around back. You know what I'm saying? I don't do this exchange while I'm outside of some fresh air. You know it's stinky in here. That's the telltale sign of it something stinks. When you go, like... You go somewhere and there's a mattress on the ground. It's like, all right, I get it. You don't have a bed frame yet. All right, let's work on getting a bed frame. But when you just got a mattress with no sheets or anything on it, now we at a whole nother level of stank on you. You know what I'm saying? Just like <laughs> Alcaz, this is pure stank on you in here. You got a mattress. Matter of fact, you got two mattresses. So we bunking up in here. We got two mattresses on the floor. We ain't got no covers, no sheets, no nothing in sight. This dude on the left. He got them, got his shoes on with jeans on. So you already know, man, this ain't the place you want to be hanging out at. If you ever go over somebody's house, you know what I'm saying? Fellas, if you go, this matter of fact, ladies too. If you go over to somebody's house and they have the mattress on the floor. Now, if they just moved in, you got to respect You say, okay, you guys are just getting moved in. Now, if they just moved in, but the mattress is on the floor and there's no sheets on it, now you need to start looking at them like what's really going on here you can go to walmart and get some sheets or something now it's all right you got your mattress on the floor you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna knock nobody because i don't know what their struggle is but if you ain't got no damn sheets on here it ain't even got to be the fitted sheet you know the fitted sheet that go at the bottom it could just be a regular sheet on top of it and then you sleep up under the cover but if your ass is sleeping raw ass on mattress with no sheets hey bro yeah, I'm, you know, me, hey, dog, I'm about to head on out. You know, I'm not going to hang out over here and there's a mattress on the ground. It ain't like no sheets and like you ain't, you ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying, be presentable. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you ain't, you ain't, you just not going to put a sheet on there. You just going to sleep your back on the, on the mattress and you up under a cover. Now I can, I can understand if you like, if you teenagers, you know what I'm saying? You teenagers. I used to go over my uh, my homeboy's house. In one of the rooms, it was just a mattress in there. We'd be up playing the video games. He'd go to his room. i just get on that mattress. i get up on the covers. But I got my clothes on now. But <laughs> I'm not sleeping on no damn mattress without no damn sheet on it. Come on now. We're not going to do that. At least put a, a, a comforter down on top of it. Sean Alexander said that's real life advice. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm just letting y'all know. We supposed to be talking about the junkie and how he passed out. We over here analyzing the room. Well, look, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for y'all so y'all can understand what I'm talking about. Y'all see what Tommy got in his hand? If you go over to somewhere and they got these mattresses on the floor like that, have that in your hand because it could get ugly real quick. If they bold enough to sleep on these mattresses, uh huh, and this place looks and smells like this, you can't trust them. You don't know what they're about to do. You don't know what they about to do. Now, nah, Ruth, fumig uh, fumigated ain't gonna do. It ain't gonna do enough for it. This house needs to be torn down. It needs to be torn down. I know you know. What I'm saying most of the time these are in our black communities, and they be like, man, we letting you know, saying the property go down. Sometimes you just gotta tear them down. Hopefully we buy the land. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm for equal opportunity. Now, they tear down land and, you know what I'm saying, they tear this house down and that lot comes for sale for like five, ten thousand dollars $10,000. Oh, yeah, you know I'm snatching it up. That's what I do. But, yeah, that house needs to be torn down. But let's get back to Tommy because guess what? I don't care how strung out these guys are. What does Tommy do? He pulls that gun out. Diamond's outside, big chilling. He goes in them pockets. He goes in them pockets because we still got to get paid. 
You know what I'm saying? You didn't cut this thing open. You're not about to be trying to carry around a brick. It's like opening, <laughs> taking a thing of flour. And it's got a cut in it. You walk around, it's dripping around. No, 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 no. I'm not about to be carrying this cocaine all around the city that's cut up. I'm going to take this money out of here. And these bank rolls, you look at these bank rolls, that's what he was going to pay Tommy. This is a junkie. This is a junkie, people. And look at this row right here. Them are well wrapped hundred dollars. So this bank roll, he took two of them about the pocket. Mm, I'm saying it's got to be about twenty. Uh, yeah, I'd probably say maybe two twenty. You know what I'm saying? Nah, ten thousand, ten thousand. So he probably said about twenty. But this is the junkie, man. We don't, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? But that boy had that bag on him though. I would have not only took this money. Y'all didn't hear this from me. And don't y'all do this in the streets. I would have took this money. I'm Tommy bleeping Egan. I'm taking the money and I'm taking the brick and I'm dipping. I'm taking everything and we getting up out of here. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm actually doing the community a favor. I'm taking money out of a junkie's pocket so he don't buy more dope. I'm taking dope out of a junkie's hand so he don't use more dope. All right there, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to cash out, and we're going to re-up. And now I got me a brick that I can go sell on my own. You know what I'm saying? Put that thing up under the shirt, go back out there, tell Diamond, here go the money. You know what I'm saying? Now I got this brick. And since he's high, I can easily come back tomorrow and be like, hey, bro, you want to buy a brick? You want to buy a brick? Huh? Yeah, you want to buy one? I got one. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's a bit opened up, but I got one. <laughs> See, I'm out here telling y'all the game, man. I'm telling y'all how to make it happen. You ain't got to listen to me if you don't want to. You ain't got to listen to me if you don't want to. Tommy, call my line. I got you. I, I know the right people. Now, this is the one of the first times that we've seen Tommy use his white privilege. Now, this cop, Diamond played this perfectly. The only thing I'll say is, is if you get pulled over, have everything prepared before they even get up to the car. Because you don't, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately for me, my um, my car insurance is on my phone. So that's one thing you need to make readily available. Don't be fumbling and jumbling trying to find your insurance. None of that, your license. If you get pulled over and you legit, have all that shit ready before they even get up there, bro. That'll make it just a little bit better. Now, am I saying it's going to go 100% perfectly? Nah, but be prepared. But also what Diamond is doing. Have your hands on that. And that's why you have everything ready. You have your insurance. You don't really, when they ask for license and registration, nine times a ten, you ain't got to show them no registration. You show them your license and your insurance. Have that shit on the dashboard. So when they come over here, my hand's on the steering wheel, and you tell them it's on the, uh, you know what I'm saying, it's on the dash so they can clearly see it. You know what I'm saying? I eliminate a little bit. But he did the right thing. Yeah, I mean, we we didn't all been there, Sean. I didn't have, you know what I'm saying? I got mm, two occasions. When I was in D.C., um, the cops pulled a, uh, me and my brother over because we fit the description. This is my younger days, tall T with the braids. So, you know what I'm saying? They pulled their guns on. It's probably like six of them. They even brought the bands out. Of course, we were walking. We wasn't driving. So we got that incident where the cops, they thought we were somebody that robbed a Burger King. Stupid stuff. I still got the detective damn car because he was like, sorry for the inconvenience and gave us the car. I should have sued their ass. Um, the second incident was I was in Arizona. I was in Chandler, uh, Arizona. This is 2007. Still back when I was young, had braids. This is when I was traveling with my job. I went to the club. Security kicked me out because I fit the description of a guy that, you know, saying shot some people the weekend before. And I was trying to tell them, like, hey, why would I shoot somebody and come back the next week? But they put me in hand because I went over to my car. They had to go in there. Luckily, I have my DOJ badge showing them that this rental car from Colorado is really mine. You know, so I'm out here working. They call my supervisor and everything. And then the third time was me and uh, my brother, Hen. We got pulled over and we stayed in Carson City, Nevada. Now, if you know, they got like the bunny ranches and everything out there. If y'all don't know what that is, look it up. We're not going to go into too much detail because of, you know, saying YouTube. But we were driving slow because we didn't know where we were going. We didn't have anything to do with the bunny ranches. But we were driving on the road and we didn't know where we were going. The cops pulled us over for going under the speed limit. We looked suspicious. We said, no, we just didn't know where we were going. We didn't want to pass up any exits. 
So, of course, they pulled us over. Three cop cars came. They had all the lights. They had their guns on us. You know what I'm saying? Had my hands on the dashboard and all that goofy shit. So they running it. They checking all the registration and the rental agreements. So, yeah, I mean, I've been there. So that's why I tell you, man, have that stuff readily available if possible. In the visor, like Sean said, if you can, have it. Like, once they pull you over, you know they're not hopping straight out. So, you know what I'm saying? Put your phone in a visible spot, like either on the dashboard or something, so they can't, you know what I'm saying, think anything like that. Put your insurance up there, your license. Hands on the steering wheel. So when they ask for it, you tell them it's here on the dashboard. You know what I'm saying? That's just a little bit. I mean, I'm not telling anybody what they need to do, but I'm just saying that's a little bit that could help you out if you get pulled over. And Diamond did the right thing. He told the cop exactly what he was going to do the whole moment. Especially, he wasn't trying to go back to jail. You know his ass was nervous. He had that hand. When he had that hand on that steering wheel, he had his hand like, like this. You know, and then he had his hand like this. <laughs> he was gripping the hell out of that steering wheel. Now, we could feel sorry for Diamond, but in reality, Diamond's ass was out there moving cocaine. <laughs> Diamond was out there moving that cocaine. Now, he wasn't trying to go back. And, of course, it looked bad because, he's you know, if they ran the plates, it would come up to a white guy. We don't know if it's Tommy Egan's name or not, but it would come up to a white guy. He don't have any insurance on him. So, yeah, you're going to be nervous. But if this cop would have just, you know what I'm saying, played it cool, did his job regularly. But, you know, you see a guy in an old school, especially if I see an older gentleman in the old school, I'm just thinking, oh, man, that man, he didn't retire. He didn't got some bread. So I'm looking at Diamond. I'm thinking, oh, shit, man, got a nice-ass Mustang. I'm not about to pull him over. I'm about to keep it moving. I don't give a damn. Unless I see you wilding out, shooting out the windows, I'm the man. That's why I couldn't be a cop, man. Y'all would be mad as hell with me. They talking about serve and protect. My job would be serve and chill unless they talking about some shootings is going on. And even if there was some shootings, I just can't see me driving. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 1091. This is a, there's a shooting in progress. Oh, shit. I ain't going over there. What the fuck? I ain't trying to die today. I'm about to go have my lunch. <laughs> driving over to somebody shooting. Damn, it's a dude speeding. How fast is he going? Oh, man, he's doing 40 and the 35. Oh, man, he ain't, he ain't doing nothing. But Diamond played it cool. The cop was being what we see all the time. And that's why they actually threw this in here. There's a lot of things that they that are going on in the real world that they throw into these shows. And I like that they put this in here. So even, you know what I'm saying, even the white people watching, they could notice, like, there was no reason to come over and talk to Diamond. He's just sitting here. It wasn't a no parking zone or anything. He was just sitting in the car. It wasn't like he was wilding out. So there's really no reason to even talk to him. But we've seen Tommy use his white privilege. Tommy came over. Hey, bro. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? He pulled his gun out on that, man. That shit crazy as hell. Tommy's like, hey, bro, there's, there's a problem, officer? I have a license registration and everything in the cars. It's my vehicle. Huh? It's mine. We ain't never seen Tommy start acting like that. But Tommy got the job done. He's like, man, you're a long way from New York, brother. You're like, yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm just out here chilling. You go from snowing to sunny in one day. <laughs> it's a nice car. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Rudy said, why Tommy's brother got to be that way? Uh, you know, it, yeah. Yeah, we got to include everybody. We got to, you know what I'm saying? Because if you don't, not taking anything away from the, you know what I'm saying, their community. But, you know, if you don't, then it could be a big uproar. You know what I'm saying? Man, you ain't got nobody in here, no representation. So you just throw somebody in there. I mean, all shows are like that. It's just the way the world is now. I mean, I don't see nothing. I don't see no problem with it. You know, when I was, when I was younger, you know, you look at it like, damn, this is weird. But now it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's it is what it is, man. If the if the person wants, to, yeah, people are gay. I don't have any issue with anything. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here, I don't care. You do what you do. It ain't got nothing to do with me. My bills are still due on the first. Whatever you whatever your sexual orientation is, it ain't got nothing to do with me because I still gotta pay rent. I still got that phone bill, still gotta pay for electricity. And me worried about what the hell you doing behind closed doors ain't gonna get nothing done. (laughs) 
ain't gonna get nothing done. You ain't gonna look. You worry. You start worrying about everybody else. This is how you gonna be looking. Hold on. Oh yeah, euphoria now. Euphoria is a whole nother ball game now. Euphoria, if you if you upset about this, you don't need to watch no euphoria. <laughs> but if you worried about the community, you're gonna be sitting just like Diamond in this thing. Fuck it, man. You are who you are. Wherever you mess with, I don't you know say it don't matter to me. Who cares? But Diamond got off of this. Thanks to our boy Tommy. Now, now. We can get back to the damn Flynn family. We got a little, you know what I'm saying, off track because my bad, I owed y'all that. I owed y'all to go back and talk to the junkie with the red lights in there. <laughs> we got Walter Flynn. He in the safe. I want to know what's in that safe. That's what I want to know. I want to know what's all in that safe. Mm-hmm. Sean Alexander, I'm from St. Lucia, and I had to unlearn that hatred for uh, someone being them. I mean, you know, it it just people were raised differently, and you know, it's more accepting now. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I like I say, I don't care. Nothing, nothing really gets to me. Nothing anybody can do can make me angry. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Especially after everything I've been through in life, it's just, hey man, whatever you are is what you are. Keep it moving. But I do want to go to St. Lucia though. Mm-hmm. I want to go down there. But it looked like people were saying that Walter, he may have cancer. Now, I know we were talking about him drinking and being Irish, but being on those meds, whatever meds he's having, I definitely wouldn't recommend you taking that whiskey straight. My bad. Let me get a whiskey neat. And you know that thing is room temperature, too. That's how they like it, that room temperature. And he taking that thing to the head. He talking about, man, fuck it. Go, 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 go. Let me pop these pills. Of course, we know Vic, and I seen this in the very first episode. Vic is not my bad. When when Walter's in the room, we call him Victor. Victor is not prepared to take over this organization. I knew from the moment we seen him, he was similar to Kane. You know what I'm saying? Like he thinks he's well, he's next in line, but is he really smart enough to run the organization? So him being here and Walter telling him that. In Ireland, you know what I'm saying? The Irish, they got to run it a certain way. They're old school, and that's how they're going to keep it. Very, very old school. So for him, he wants to prove to his dad that he's worthy of it. Because if you remember, he was riding around with his Uncle Polly. Uncle Polly, the only reason he's riding with him, because you see, Uncle Polly doesn't go in and do any drops. Uncle Polly is pretty much a made man, just like Walter is. He's just out here being the advisor, you know what I'm saying, like the supervisor. To everything that Vic is doing. He's trying to get Vic to understand, hey, if you're going to be running this, you got to run it right. So he's, you know, saying Walter's right-hand man. Now, I'm thinking Polly is Walter's brother-in-law, like, through his wife. Because uh, in the he's not a Flynn, so. But he's trying to tell Walter, I mean, Victor, hey, bro, you got to run this the, the exact same way that I'm running it right now. And Victor's hearing this. He's like, man, all right, I got you, Dad. That means showing up to, you know what I'm saying, to drug deals and not having all the money. Come on, Vic. That's going to get somebody killed. They lucky Tommy showed up. They were getting into it with junkies. So that shows us Vic doesn't know how to run any deals on his own, that he's making deals with junkies. You know what I'm saying? He's talking about uh, Zamos was supposed to be there. Why Why are you making deals with Zamos and Zamos ain't there? Like, that's just, excuse me, that's just silly. Very, very silly. Rudy said, <laughs> Rudy said, ain't no Irish family running nothing in Chirac. Uh, I mean, you never really know if they run an the organization correctly. I mean, I know, of course, a lot of what we hear is the the low level things, you know, saying with the, the black, the black community and how we got the gangs and stuff. But when you run this stuff, they might be running it through, you know, what I'm saying different industries and stuff. It's, it's always something, because you got to remember, the mob used to run Chicago, and they did all that behind the scenes. They still, I'm pretty sure they're probably still involved with, like, the union and stuff. But as far as this drugs, you never know. Everybody has, there's enough for everybody to get a piece of the, you know what I'm saying, a piece of the cake. Matter of fact, let me look something up real quick.
Oh, that's 1920s. The Irish mob. I'm just trying to see what they got. Uh, Crime Boss, Irish Central. Patrick O'Leary, blah, 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 blah. 2020, that's 1800s. Blah, blah, blah. O'Leary family, how when? That's old. Uh, let me see. Uh, well, what I'm seeing is uh, the Irish mob. The Irish mob is still active in the USA. Chicago was heavy with the mob activity for at least 100 years, dating back to the 1920s. So they still there. We don't know how big, you know what I'm saying? We don't know how big the Flynn family is. We seen Rojos went out there and put out eight bricks in a day. Eight bricks is, let's be real. When you're thinking of the big scheme of things, eight bricks is laughable. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Eight bricks. Oh, man, we didn't seize eight bricks. Eight? That's it? That's it? That's a that's a regular traffic stop in, in Texas. You see what I'm saying? So you got to look at the different levels of what they're at. We don't really know how much they're moving. And they they're doing well for themselves. But you got to also remember that Walter's been doing this for years. He's been running this for years. And that's why you hear Vic and Claudia talking about we're not going to be able to get any new connects. So he got old money. And that's why he's saying let's continue to run it like this. For the most part, Flynn, they may not be as big as you think to like run in Chicago. But they got old money that's stacked up and they, they're pretty much set. Everything is paid for. So now we got to do is do our little drops. And you see, we haven't. We haven't seen the Flynn family involved with anything big. They got a little racketeering going on with, with Gloria's Bar. That's one of their pickup spots. You know what I'm saying? They're doing like little security and things like that. So it's not saying that the Flynn family is running Chicago. They got ties to the mob. But how big are they actually? You know what I'm saying? Of course, we know it's fictional. But when you look at like the whole scheme of things, they might not really be that big. You know what I'm saying? They moving. Ro, my bad. Rojas is moving eight bricks in a day. Like I said, in Texas, eight bricks is a regular traffic stop. When they can catch in people bringing over 200, 300, you know what I'm saying? They can stop 200, 300. So eight it really ain't running nothing, but it, it is what it is. 100 years mean they got hella illegal businesses set up. Exactly. Now, nah, Rudy, I'm not saying I'm not saying the mafia is still present. I'm just saying that they had those ties. Walter. Let's just say Walter is 60 something years old. He's 60 something years old. That means he built this from the ground up. Vic and Claudia, they got to be in their 20s. So he's been doing it for at least 20 years, would take us back to the, the 90s. So he has money. He has those connections. But that's why Vic and Claudia, that's why they're talking about Pops isn't going to give us a Coke Connect. They're trying to branch out and do other things. That's why we're talking about them now. And what did Claudia say? Claudia is telling them, look at the bread they got. Claudia is trying to bring in new age drugs. Walter is doing it the old school way from the 80s and 90s where it was very prevalent of what they were moving. Claudia is trying to bring them into the modern day. So we're not saying that he runs Chicago. We're just saying that he's been instilled and he has, you know what I'm saying, he has his roots here. So he still has his little people that are going to be, you know what I'm saying, bringing in a significant amount of money. Because, I mean, look, they sitting on some, you know, they sitting on bread right now. I don't think they're that uh, that big old girl had the spider pack. Yeah, she had. It may be the, you know what I'm saying, the, <laughs> the Jimenez cartel. It may be them. But that's what I'm saying. The Flynn family, they probably aren't that big. They may have been big in the 80s and 90s. And now Walter, he got legit businesses and stuff like that. I mean, of course, we're never going to really know until, you know, the feds bring down an organization. We're not going to know what's really going on behind the scenes. But, you know, there's always somebody tied up in different things. But we see that the Flynn's, Claudia is trying to say, we need to, hey, <laughs> we need to get modernized, Pops. You know what I'm saying? Claudia told Vic, look, man, we got some stuff. I was out in the club the other night. Let me tell you. Ooh. I took two shots. I got on this new thing, this new chemical they got. And man, not only was I high, I took a girl home to 
first night. I'm talking about we just met each other, and she gave me a plug. She gave me a plug the first night. That's what these drugs is doing. That ain't it. Ain't what pops is doing. Now, Claudia, she wants to get in the game, but we know that Walter. Once again, Walter is old school, and he's telling the Nah, man, you can't be doing this. You make sure the books are straight, and he runs the fucking streets. <laughs> I can't do no damn accent. But Claudia is like, man, you need to talk to Pops, man. This is what we need to be on. We need to be on this new thing. You know what I'm saying? We need to be on this new thing. And that's where the whole argument is. Like, look at Walter coming in with that damn cigarette. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. And he came in with that cigarette. He looking over at Claudia like, you in my seat again? He don't like when she be in that seat. But she just wants to get in the game, and you tell her you can't. That ain't that ain't what the game is for. You know what I'm saying? That ain't what the game is about. The game belongs to me, <laughs> not you. Victor's getting the next, not you, Victor. You make sure the books are straight, and that's why when we get ready to go into in like the next ten minutes, I'm gonna show y'all the trailer for episode three. We'll see. That she's about to try to partner with Tommy. And that's what I was thinking the whole time. Her and Vic, you know what I'm saying? They out here, they trying to figure out things with their father. But yeah, Pops ain't doing nothing. Pops ain't changing the organization because IRA, they want it ran a certain way. So just make sure the books are good. That's all that matters. He said, where did Claudia's accent go? Well, I guess I guess she can turn it on and off. They were born in America. So, you know, a lot of people, once they're born in the States, they may get a little accent from their parents. But then they, you know, say they speak whatever, you know, saying whatever accents in the city that they're from. So she may be able to turn it on and off. I don't know. I mean, I ain't really notice it. Tommy's new character is nice, ruthless. I would love for Ghost to be brought back together with Tommy. That would be crazy. Well, I mean, I like the I like Tommy on his own. Let's see what Tommy can do for at least a whole season before we start saying, man, Tommy can't carry a show. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Thank you for that, Miss Anna. Let's get them likes up. I ain't even looked at those in a minute. Come on, y'all. I'm about to find uh, the trailer for episode three. I think I have it on my dashboard. But hit those likes for me. We need 15 more likes, y'all. 15 more likes, please. 15 more likes. And I'll be right back. Damn, Barry said smash the like. Oh, I just said, you know what I'm saying? Give me a like. Uh-huh, I'm watching y'all. I can see what's going on now. Don't do that to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, now I'm, I'm not saying he can't hold his own. I'm just saying I want to see how, you know what I'm saying, how Tommy does with his own season. But I agree with you. It would have been cool to see them, you know what I'm saying, on the screen just a little bit longer. But it is what it is. Tommy is definitely thinking more than he used to because he used to be shoot first. Uh, <clears throat> from this season, he has been shoot first. The first episode, he went in there and he shot them dudes. He talked to them. He said something. You need to know how many rounds are in your clip. Bop, bop, bop. 
three shots. He gone. <laughs> What's the first thing he did when he had the upper hand on uh, Rojas's people? You know what I'm saying? He threw them in the trunk and blew them up. We, you know what I'm saying? He threw them in the trunk, blew them up. So Tommy is still shoot first. It's just they had him in a situation where guns were on him, and he's starting to actually think things through. Now, when he headbutt the guy, that was silly because they could have easily got rid of him. But instead, 10 more likes, y'all. Come on. I said 100. We just need 10. And then I'm going to show y'all the trailer. You know what I'm saying? I pulled it up. So Tommy is still. Yeah, he is thinking smarter. He's thinking smarter. But he still shoot first if, if he gets a chance. Now, I will give you with Simon. The only reason he didn't get rid of Simon is because in his head he was thinking, you know what? Let me figure out what they got going on. Let me figure out what they got going on. He took that damn cell phone. <clears throat> Pushing for him. Let me see what y'all got. Catch up on these real quick. Oh, first last. I didn't know you was in here. What's going on, girl? How you doing? How you doing? <clears throat> All right, let me see. We got the... Is this the Adler trailer? Because I don't want to play the whole trailer, and then, you know, they be slapping me up real quick. All right, yeah, this is it. Let me see. Hold on, I think my damn fan on. Oh, oh, oh. All right, here we go. If you guys don't like spoilers, you don't like watching the trailers for the next episode, this is episode three, the trailer. So we're going to see what's about to go on in next week's episode. I'm going to do a couple of more breakdowns this week. The top five video up for episode two. It's on the channel. Uh, I think the next thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to actually sp explain who Lillian is to everybody because they, they're getting their mixed up with Pink Sneakers. Pink Sneakers is actually the girl that cut her face. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to break that down probably tomorrow because I got to record uh, Fresh Prince tonight. I got to record Euphoria tonight. <clears throat> Let me see. So here we go. This is episode three, the trailer. Of course, you know, whenever I do it, I have to break it up a little bit because I don't want you two to be slapping me with it. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all that, you know what I'm saying, the, the big screen. Uh, let me turn this up. I know y'all going to be, Mo, turn it up, man. Turn it up. I'm like, damn, I'm trying to. It's loud as hell on my end. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me see. Edit, stop. All right. So here we go. Trailer for episode three. I mean, y'all hear what Barry is saying. Hit that like button. <laughs> That's the same thing I was thinking. Uh, I think it was the the cartels logo but we'll see i seen a breakdown i think movie bot did one but i wasn't too sure i didn't watch i seen his thumbnail but i didn't really watch it oh thank you manny for that y'all hit that like button 499 i definitely appreciate that we're gonna go get some chicken nuggets with those tomorrow no lie <laughs> all right here go the trailer man i keep stalling y'all here we go trailer for uh episode three About the Flint family. A little over the top. I've got some little kick your teeth in a thousand times over. Sounds fun. I'll say no one is wrong, Wendy, you're mad. Okay. This is all kinds of wrong. I'm not used to people not following my orders. Good thing I ain't told people. Y'all see that? Y'all see what we got going on? Now, we see Tommy talking to. We see him talking to Lillian. So, this is like the first. The first scene that we're probably going to see because this was the ending scene where he was whooping on her in the damn kitchen. Now, I don't know why Tommy was doing all that, all that excessive kicking around the, the kitchen. Like, hey, bro, just pistol whip her one or two times. She's going to give you the damn answers. He over here kicking the cabinets and stuff. 
Now, we find out that she wasn't there to kill Tommy. You know, the the scene where she hit him in the back of the head, she's not there to kill Tommy. She just heard that there was a crazy white boy in the city. You know what I'm saying? There was a crazy white boy in the city, so she assumed that it was Tommy. So she was like, man, I thought Tommy was coming to Chicago to kill me. Tommy thought she came to Chicago to kill him. But after they did this, he found that brick. So for him, he's looking at it. Hey, man, we can make some money together because you are actually loyal. You remember the reason they didn't kill her is because she didn't snitch. So since she didn't tell on him, Ghost told Julio to give her the money and she ran away. Now, Tommy, he was like, man, we need to get rid of her because she could be a loose end. Whole time she was loyal. So she went to Chicago and started off fresh. And now we're going to see them work together because you got to remember, Tommy's in Chicago by herself. Yeah, you see him working with Diamond, but Diamond and CBI, that, that's not his crew. Right now, all Tommy has is him. Of course, he got his brother, JP. We don't know what JP's on in these streets. He's getting his club shot up. <laughs> pause. Oh, yeah, pause. <laughs> He's getting his, his venue shot up by his own son. But Lillian, we know that she's loyal. She already knows how to move drugs. That was her job. So these two, they're going to partner up with each other. <laughs> Rudy said, Rudy said, <laughs> Tommy's going to have a hell of a consignment uh, tab. You don't know what a consignment is. Basically, like, hey, this is, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is ours. We're going to get it to you. You got to bring them things back. You know what I'm saying? Same with like a car. This is your car. We're going to sell it for you. We're going to need something for that. So he's basically saying that Tommy's about to owe a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He said, Tommy about to move a hundred bricks. <laughs> Eric, uh, Lillian is technically the last alive from Ghost and Tommy's original crew. That's true. Everybody else is gone. You know, it's just Tommy. She was there. She was actually very, very loyal. You know what I'm saying? She didn't snitch on nobody. She got that money from Julio. And she got the hell about the city. The smartest thing you could do. Now, her ending up in Chicago, that, I mean, that's crazy to me. I'm getting as far away from New York as possible. But I guess with the money that she got from Julio, it really wasn't enough money to move out to California and chill because she's in a little trap house. Let's not get that misconstrued. The place that she's living at right now is a little, you know, a little junky. Yeah, she probably went out there like $20,000. Like, look where she's living at. Like, man, they got these old... <laughs> They got this old crap on the window that you used to have at your grandma's house. Like, grandma, why you got that up? <laughs> the same light that the junkies had just with a regular light bulb. They got, what is this, a blanket over the couch? So she ain't living in too good of conditions. But I guess with the money she got, you know what I'm saying, she don't really have any job experience. It's not like she can go to a job and say, hey, I used to be a courier. <laughs> hey, what did you used to do? I used to carry drugs for people. Oh, really? Okay, cool. Here you go. You got a job at UPS. What can Brown do for you? Now, I'm not sure what these packages are here, but I will tell you that with the windows open and a little bit of TLC, this fire uh, fire station don't look that bad. <laughs> Kendall said it looked better than Kato's house. Kato, very... Very attractive young woman, but lived in a terrible spot. You might as well say that's where the junkies was living. Paint was all off the walls. I'm like, man, what the? F <laughs> Kato, you living like this? I see why you tried to stay over. Um, <laughs> what's his name? B. Mickey's house. It stank over here. You know, you got the washer and dryer when you first come to fr <laughs> the first door. <laughs> you come in the front door, it's a washer and a dryer. You're like, um, this is how you living. I'm good on that. Barry said them bricks. I don't know what kind of bricks are wrapped like this, but we can assume that they are. These things ain't even even. This brick right here, way bigger than this little thing. You know, I, if I'm, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Tommy, when you start moving them bricks, man, let me come over there and pick up mine first because I'm going to take this one right here. I'm probably going to take this bigger one down here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You going over Tommy, you the last person on the uh the delivery list. He giving you this small brick over here. Like, man, Tommy, what the hell is this? I'm paying you fifteen thousand, twenty thousand dollars for a brick, and you giving me something for ten.
<laughs> hey Barry, these bricks is all different sizes, man. But you see them asking about the Flynn family. Anybody crazy enough to go against the Flynn family, it's going to be word around the town. Hey, man, somebody got into it with Vic. Oh, you know Vic? Yeah, Walter Flynn's son? Yeah, man, some crazy-ass white boy robbed him. And, uh, man, you, you remember uh, you remember CBI? They were real big 15 years ago before uh, Diamond got locked up? Yeah, 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 yeah. He robbed, he robbed Diamond's little brother? Oh, shit. If he crazy enough to mess with the Flynn's, then we didn't figure out about him. Now we see Claudia partnering up with Tommy. Now I know in the credits we were seeing how long are the Flynn's gonna be here, but Tommy's trying to make some money. That's the only thing he's doing in Chicago. He's trying to make some money. He told Diamond to his face, Oh man, it don't matter how much you break me off with. I'm just, you know, what I'm saying anything is better than nothing. So what she's doing is trying to modernize the game. So she's gonna go behind her father's back. I can already see this happen. She can go behind her father's back. And since she doesn't have any muscle and she's not in the street, who better than go with? Tommy. Now, if you remember in the first episode at the very end where Tommy met Walter for the first time, Claudia was up at the top and she was observing everything that was going on. Now, you remember Vic, he showed up late. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. And that's where uh, Walter threw the bag at him because Tommy took the money. He took half from Jannard and um, Diamond and he took half from Vic. They got his money back. Diamond and Jannar got theirs back here. But Claudia was watching the whole time. So she's putting the play in like, man, whoever this crazy white boy is, if I can connect with him, I got something that, I, you know what I'm saying? Y'all remember the junkie? How you? No, this right here. Ooh, wee, it's going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? She was in the club first night. Took a little thing home with her. Got some drink. She was up off her ass. Hey, is there any way I can get more of this? Now, I think. I'm thinking the person they're about to show that has his shirt off dancing, this is going to probably be who the connect is. Sounds fun. I don't say no in the mate. This gentleman right here, I'm thinking this is going to be who Claudia is getting it from. We just heard Vic tell Tommy when it involves money, all that personal stuff, we don't care about none of that. And that's how it should be. If you ain't beefing about the money, then what's the problem? That's one of the realest things ever. You shouldn't beef over anything except for money. Now, money is something, that, you know what I'm saying? You can get into a lot of nonsense dealing with some money. But you get that business right, then you ain't got to beef over it. But this gentleman, he looks like he's in a good mood. And you already heard and seen how Claudia was partying that night. You know what I'm saying? Nah, Claudia, who said, someone said Claudia was a cop? No, no, no. Claudia is a cop or an informant. Nah, I don't think, nah, uh, be more. I don't think, nah, I couldn't see Claudia being that. Just from who her family is. When would she ever have had a time to get away from her dad, you know what I'm saying, her brother? Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Okay, Gloria. Now, that would be interesting if Gloria did have some time. I was going to say, yeah, Claudia... She she was born into it. She was born into the game. Now she's been sheltered from it as far as like physical hands on, you know what I'm saying? She's not doing any money transactions or any drug transactions, but yeah. But I, you know, I kind of agree with Barry. I don't think anybody's uh undercover cops or anything on this not on this show. They might introduce we already have Sheriff Bennigan. And we're not really seeing him. I think Gloria is just. Because if Gloria was a cop, she would have still been messing with Victor. Her job undercover would have been to stay with Victor. And their relationship is only broken off because of her. It's not like Vic left her and went on the move. You know what I'm saying? Her job, if she was undercover, would be to stay with Vic and try to infiltrate everything that the Flynn family is doing. She knows about the houses. She even said, I can't marry you because your family wants, you know what I'm saying, you to be with an Irish woman. So she's not a cop. She just she just caught up in it. You know what I'm saying? It was a, she likes white boys. Let's just let's just get that out there. She likes white boys. She got Vic, you know what I'm saying? A poster child for the Irish mob. You got Tommy who just doesn't give a damn. And she's opening up that kitchen and giving that soup up to whoever wants to slurp it up. 
Now, once you put that bowl down, then you might not be able to go back to the soup bowl. But when you get that soup bowl the first time, you better hold on to it. And I ain't talking chicken noodle soup either. Not none of that generic soup. <laughs> but back to this guy. I didn't even look up who his name was. I did want to find out. Matter of fact, we're going to do that right now. But this guy, we see that he's in a good mood. So he's probably going to be the connect that Claudia told Tommy, hey, I need you to go over there and talk to him. You know? His name is... I don't know. Is it? Let me let me know what you guys think. Hold on. Damn, where's that? This guy could either be Reggie uh, Pina Pina. Let me see who Luis Jose Luis Jose Luis Jose Lopez. Let's see what he looked like. Let's see if this is his character. That could be him. Does that look like him? Let me see. This looks more like him right here. Luis Jose Lopez plays a guy named Reggie Pina. Does it look like him to y'all? Let me know what y'all think. Does this look like... This gentleman here, Luis, I mean, my bad, Reggie. Is that what he said his name was? Yeah, Reggie Pina, Pina, Reggie Pina. Does this look like Reggie Pina right here? Him, him. 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 Barry said he seems wow. Well, he on no drugs. We know he doing no drugs, but I think that's him. I'm I don't know, man. Let me know if y'all think that that yeah, I can't really tell. Let me see if we can get another picture of him. Okay. I don't know, man. Kind of look like a okay. I don't know, man. This might be him got the stubble. That might be Reggie. Uh, I don't know. Let me see who else's name we had on here. It's either Reggie or it could be Andreas, Brandon Gallets. Let's see. No, I don't think it's this dude. <laughs> yeah, we just gonna say we just gonna say it's Reggie for right now. I don't think it's this dude. What's this dude name? Andreas? No, I don't think we just gonna stick with Reggie right now. Let me let me see. Episodes, two episodes. This is who we are. Storm clouds. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I'm looking at the just the main cast, so yeah, I'm just gonna stick with Reggie until we find out more about that. So don't hold me to it. But for educational purposes, we're gonna call him. Reggie. That's what I'm thinking. It could be that, I don't know, Andreas. I don't know. We're going to see. Whoever it is, Tommy got on his ass. <laughs> Whoever he is, Tommy got on his ass. It's either Reggie or uh, Andreas. We're going to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully they unleash a clip or something this week. I'll break it down and I'll tell you exactly who it is. So we got two names that it could potentially be. But I'm thinking that that's going to be who the new connect is working through Claudia behind her dad's back. Now, we've seen that Walter, he's out here talking to Tommy. He's not used to people not doing what he says. That's because everybody's normally been up under his organization. The thing about Tommy is Tommy don't give a damn about what you really got going on. Tommy's going to do it. Whatever Tommy needs to do. Now, we even see Lillian back here. <laughs> now, I thought there was going to be a little a little tension between Vic and Tommy. Of course, it's going to be there, you know, saying it's underlying tension. Just for the simple fact that Tommy's messing with Gloria and he's seen that. But when it comes to making business move, I'm sure Claudia said, hey, you need to partner up with Tommy. Y'all need to do something because whoever... 
the connections that Tommy made, Tommy made three connections today. The Jewish connect, the junkie, and then uh, the Spanish connect. So he has those three. But also during all these drops, Vic has people also. So if you can partner with Tommy, Tommy will get it from the connect. Boom, y'all split it up. Y'all go do what y'all need to do. I think that's what's going on. Claudia is going to be the one pulling the strings. Vic is going to be in the actual streets. So Claudia is going to become that next kingpin type to either take over the organization or branch off and do her own thing. And of course, Tommy ain't going to do what nobody got. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter what anybody got to say. Tommy is going to do what Tommy got to do. Now, I'm going to open up the line so you guys can call in for these last 15, 20 minutes. Hit that like button. We just need two more and we get 100 likes. Three more, my bad. Three likes. But I'm going to drop the link. If y'all want to join, let's do it. Uh, let me see. Invite. Copy the clip for Matter of fact, what do y'all think? Do y'all think Tommy working with the Flynn kids is a good idea? Or it could potentially backfire. I know earlier people were saying that um, Vic is going to set up Tommy. Of course, he was not going to do it early in the season. But do you think that 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 partnership with Claudia being in charge, not Vic, Claudia being in charge and partnering with Tommy, do y'all think that that could work? I mean, I think it's a, it's a possibility. <clears throat> Mm. that they could make some money with each other. There you go. I put the link up if anybody wants to join. But if not, y'all can go ahead and ask me questions. But, okay, lady says she could see the Tommy and uh, Claudia working. <laughs> Rudy, <laughs> Rudy said Tommy got all his money in crypto. Where is it at? I mean, Tommy got some bread. We just don't know, you know what I'm saying, where is it at? He may have put it somewhere. When he got in the city, we haven't seen it. I don't know, man. I don't know. But shoot, I mean, you make it twenty five thousand dollars in one day of some a couple of drops, then shoot, I do that three, four times a week. I mean, of course, you got to make more connects, but if you selling one brick to, you know, what I'm saying you selling them to your your connects, you be in the middle, man. First, I got to give me some bricks. And if I can sell one brick to the Spanish, they should be able to get that off in a week, two weeks. So even if I am getting about, you know what I'm saying, profit, eight, ten thousand $10,000, man, I can sell one brick a week. I don't have to get greedy and sell 20 and 30 of them. If I can just do one, two a week, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't need much. Just some home-cooked food. And Gloria got that. He already goes to the bar and drinks for free. He gets the soup for free. He gets all that for free. Now we got a new... um. A new supplier. <laughs> you know, said Lillian is supposed to be what two bit was for Tommy. Yeah, that's true. Two bit was loyal. Two bit was loyal as hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I rock with two bit. Now, my, my favorite one out of them two was him and Spank. Uh, well, out of him and Spank was Spank. Spank was my boy until he, you know what I'm saying, he got popped. You got to respect the gang, man. I told you, y'all get in this. You can't run your mouth, but you got to be prepared to do that time. If you do the crime, you need to do the time. Ain't that what they say? <laughs> you do the crime, you need to do the time. Man, fuck all that. There we go. Let me see what else we had. It's going to backfire. Vic is jealous. Tommy smashing his chick. Yeah, uh, that's that. That's that's tough. Like for Vic, I'm thinking. I get. I, I guess it's his love for her. Him and Gloria. They've been around for a while, and that thing must be good because it got Tommy coming back. Tommy coming back to the bar. He just taking shots with her. They ain't even doing. They just hanging out talking. He said, "Can I come by?" Now, if I'm texting somebody, matter of fact, let me see what time that was. I want to, I want to, I want to make sure we on the the right page. Oh, they didn't give us no time. Oh, let me see if the phone shows it. Man, what kind of phone time he got? He ain't got no time at the top. I wanted to see what time he was texting Gloria. I'm assuming it's about after everything they did. 
I'm assuming this is about 10, 11 o'clock. It might be a little bit later than that. If it's a weekday, the bar might shut down about 10 or 11. You know what I'm saying? So let's just say it's a weekday. It's about 11 o'clock. I'm not texting. Hey, can I stop by uh, Stop by the bar later? No, 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 no. I'm not stopping by that bar. My text message would have said, What time are you gonna be at the house? I want to stop by. Is that okay if I stop by? You know what I'm saying? After you leave the bar? Oh yeah, Tommy, come on over. But hurry up because Mo's coming over next. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Tommy over here, he whipped. He came over here just to hang out. You say, shoot, I'm about to just go over there and talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just want somebody to talk to. <laughs> he over here taking shots. So, how'd you get into the bar business? Well, actually, I wanted a Jamaican cuisine, but, you know, I ended up getting into this. Tommy's like, oh, man, that's interesting. Tommy got a thing for them black women. Mm-hmm. Tommy got a thing for them black women. Keisha been gone for I don't know how long. He still got this picture in his phone. Oh man, I miss Keish. Keish was my bae. Man, you don't delete this damn photo and get on Gloria. She ain't got no kids that we know about either. And she on a bar. Keisha was out here in these streets snitching, wearing hand-me-downs. We ain't forget about that. Keisha using Tasha's closet wearing her clothes. Talk about, oh, I would love this life. Goddamn. Blanca came up to her with that paperwork. She. <laughs> <laughs> who said tommy's mama like black men oh it be more hey for real kate she went uh she let jp's father just slide on through and she said you know what i'm out of here and then she got with tommy's dad teresi this is why ladies shouldn't give fellas mixed signals and have them moving like vic crazy as hell Ladies, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. Also, fellas, I'm gonna give you the flip side of it too. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I, I used to be in the game. You know what I'm saying? My younger days. I'm a little bit laid back now. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out there pursuing like I used to. But I can. I can get up in a girl's ear. But ladies, don't be giving. And listen to me. Listen to me carefully. This goes for white ladies, black ladies, Hispanic ladies, Asian ladies. Don't be giving no dude the key to your apartment. If that ain't the silliest shit ever, never, ever, ever give someone a key to your apartment unless it's a family member. And even then, you don't want them to have access to it. You know what I'm saying? Never give them a key or you're going to be looking like Claudia getting out the shower. You know what I'm saying? Like you getting out the shower and Vic is sitting in your house. Come on. Don't do that, ladies. Don't give the key to your spot to anybody fellas don't do it either because then women can just pop up at your house but also another thing you don't this is for my guys you don't want that key to that apartment because during the day she's gonna have some stupid shit going on she's at work hey can you stop by the house and do this now you got to go out your way and if you don't do it they get upset so it's just best to not take the key hey could you stop by my house and water my plants hell no i'm not stopping by the house and watering your plants because i got the key don't do it don't do it. Don't give your key to your home, your apartment. Don't matter what it is. Your little crack house like we've seen the junkie. Don't give your key to nobody unless you're married to them or it's just like someone you can trust. Or you're going to be looking like Claudia. Vic, you can't be doing this. You can't be popping up. Well, actually, he can be popping up. You gave him a key to the spot. Vic can do whatever the hell he want until you change the locks. He told you your face. Hey, man. If you don't want me here, change the locks. Man, what kind of creepy shit is that? Them locks would have been changed. If a chick told me, oh, if you don't want me here, I ain't giving you the key back. You better change the lock. I'm like, okay, I'm going to change them locks. And I'm going to change your ass, too, with these motherfucking fists. Pink, pink, pink. <laughs> you getting out the shower. Now, I, I don't know about y'all, but she hopped about the shower. I'm talking about, let me, hold on, let me find it. Let me find it. She hopped about the shower like, ooh, we about to see something. We about to see something. Her ass. Let me know if y'all do this. When you hop out the shower, do you do you hop directly out the shower and put your robe on, or do you dry off and then put the robe on? Now I know what the robe is for, 
But even me, I don't know, man. It's just something about me. When I hop about that shower, like when I go to a hotel, I don't just throw that robe on unless I got company. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm going to be chilling in the robe, I'm going to dry off. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to dry off and then put the robe on and big chilling. She then took this off. She's doing her hair. She's oh, looking in the mirror like, hmm, damn, I look good. You know what I'm saying? I just gave that soup up to Tommy. Whoop dee whoop dee whoop. Oh, see? So everybody's right. Dry off first. Because I was watching that. I said, man, it's some weird shit. No offense to my white followers, but that's like, man, this got to be some white people shit. <laughs> I'm not hopping out the shower and putting on a robe. This robe is for me to walk around like, okay, I'm just in my drawers. But if someone was to knock on the door, I could open the door. I got a robe on. You know what I'm saying? I got my body covered up. She hopped about this thing, wet as hell, reached over there. She said, fuck that. I'm putting this robe on. I'm too lazy. The robe going to dry me. The robe going to dry me. Now you got water all on the floor. You walking around, body just uh, dripping. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> and y'all know how y'all know what I hate. I hate wet socks. So now I'm getting dressed. I got this wet ass robe on, the carpet wet, because I ain't dry off. Now I'm going into the bathroom because you know what I'm saying? I gotta put my clothes on and stuff now. Oh shoot, let me go brush my teeth again. <laughs> oh damn, man. I got my socks on because you don't wear your shoes around the house. Now you stepping in water in the damn bathroom. You like, God damn it, these wet ass socks. Oh, I didn't dry off. I just put the robe on. Now, when you hang the robe up, you got to make sure that this robe, the robe dries before the next time you wear it. Because if not, it could get a little bit moldy. You hanging up this wet ass, you know what I'm saying, this wet ass robe. Like that robe ain't the same thing. It ain't the same fabric that a towel is. Now, it's cotton, but it's going to hold that moisture. Come on now. You got these damn concrete. You got brick walls in here. Oh, yeah. You know the humidity in that thing is piling up. It's steaming up in that bathroom. That robe is holding all that water. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. He said, first, first last said her ears are elfy. I just noticed that. When I read that comment, them things is up there like <laughs> Keebler Elf. Oh, no. And I'm not triggered. I'm not triggered. I'm just pointing that out. Like, y'all... Y'all don't dry off before you put the robe on. She just hopped about that motherfucker. She said, you know what the hell with this? She hopped out that robe. She ain't even this. This is the type of shower that I don't like. Now I went to there was a the hotel I stayed in uh in France. They had the bathtub like this with the shower on top of it. I hate it because there's no, you know, what I'm saying there's no curtains behind you. So you washing up, you got to be careful. This is one of those showers where you just like delicate, you know what I'm saying? You just washing up, you know what I'm saying. You got to be washing up nice and slow because if you wash up too fast, you slinging soap all on the, the, the floor, all that. You, you know what I'm saying? I got a loofah. You know what I'm saying? I use a loofah. You know what I'm saying? Sud that thing up. Call me what you want. I got the loofah with the, you know what I'm saying? I got the extendo on it. Pause. Get that back. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I'm doing this, but I ain't got no damn shower curtains up there. It's soap all on the floor. The damn bathroom mirror got soap on it. She's in here. She talking about the hell with that. See, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all laughing, but y'all know it's facts. Because we didn't all been there before. Like, when I first moved into my spot, uh, where was it? Oh, when I first moved into my uh, into my house when I moved off base, I didn't have a shower curtain at my house in Germany. I got in there. I'm trying to take a shower as close to the wall as possible because you don't want all this water on the floor and stuff. She like, shit, I don't give a damn. You know, this is how we live in here. We live raw. <laughs> Anyway, let me get back to what I was telling y'all about not giving away that key. <laughs> oh, see, see, that's what these open discussions are for. Anna said, is there another door to the bath? She living in a straight studio apartment. You got your bed right here. So you cooking. Grease is flying from the stove to your bed. The water from the bathroom is going <laughs> flooding into the kitchen. Yeah, everything right there. That's what it's looking like. Because you remember her and Tommy, when they were getting it in, I think you seen the kitchen in the background. She got that studio pressure. I mean, that studio apartment. Mind you, that bar ain't making no money. It was three people at that bar. Two chicks. And Simon was talking to both of the chicks. And then Tommy. And she giving Tommy all the free drinks. Tommy's the one you're supposed to bust over the head with the prices. Tommy got bread. Simon in here, he just doing security, watching over people and harassing the women. Those two ladies, they ain't buying nothing but maybe one or two drinks. So the bar ain't making no money. You know what I'm saying? She got that studio apartment. I'm talking about this place right here that she in. Probably about 900 a month. 
If that, I mean, I don't know what Chicago prices is, but for some crap like that out here where I live, oh yeah, this little bullshit that she living in, you gonna probably be spending about two bands for. <laughs> water splashing everywhere now you got now you got you got bathroom you might as well mop the floor when you get out of from taking a shower at glorious house you might as well get the mop out because it's soap and water all over the floor you can mop the bathroom floor the kitchen you could do all that in one day man that's what you might as well do hop out put that robe on get that swiffer jet out get to work look at it mm -hmm. yeah i know i look good mm-hmm well walter what are you doing in? Matter of fact, we ain't we ain't even peep that. Where the hell is she living at? This motherfucker got stained glass windows in the place. There's no way I'm walking into an apartment and they got stained glass windows next to the kitchen. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna buy this. You know, I'm gonna buy this. Hell no. Stained glass windows. My goodness. Am I looking too deep in this, y'all? Am I looking too deep in this? Are y'all are we starting to notice all of this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's good, Miss D. I want to know is her place above the bar because if you guys remember, I was saying in the first episode, Tommy he whooped the niggas ass in the back <laughs> in the back alley, and then they went straight to her place. So it must be upstairs. She might be living above it. Man, I don't know, man, Miss D. I like. I thank you. I want to know is the bar above it. It's the bar above it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Be more said, blame the set director. Now, I, I will cut this some slack. I know it's a TV show, and of course, you know, they're not gonna have everything perfect. Courtney Kent, when she was talking about handling the budget and building the sets, you know, they're not about to go all out. If we can, you know, saying cut some, we just have it here. I'm just saying in general, when we look at it. The observation of his power was real. Like, damn, she living like that. This is this is how she's living is the upgrade of Cato. Cato moved out of her house. She made a little bit of money, and this is where she's at now. She's not really all the way on her feet. You know what I'm saying? But she's she's good. <laughs> Gloria gonna go out due to <laughs> pneumonia. <laughs> 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 hey man she hopped about that thing and mind you it's winter time these brick walls let me tell you something y'all if y'all ever been in an abandoned building or something brick walls don't do anything to the code it holds that thing in there you can go in like if you touch a regular wall you know what i'm saying it might be a little cold if you touch a brick wall in the winter that shit cold as hell you're like god damn she living in this thing. <laughs> she know damn well she don't need to have these outlets up here. That water splashing everywhere. You got grease on these outlets. And these ain't even had like no uh, like no little surge protectors on. These are just industrial plugs, man. Them things get wet. It is over. And you know she ain't dry off. <laughs> but again, don't give your key. I know we got a little sidetrack with Glory out here doing her Victoria's Secret model in the in the mirror. But don't give your key because you're going to have a crazy dude like this in the place. Or you're going to have a, a crazy chick. You chilling. You big chilling. You know what I'm saying? You ain't even doing nothing you ain't supposed to be doing. You just chilling. You hear the door open. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. It's big ass. And then they talking about, oh, my God, man. What was he doing over there? She gave him a key. That means enter when you want. You and Vic ain't been together for how long and he still has a key? This man's telling you, let's go to another house. Like, they've been broken up for a while. They didn't just break up when episode one started. They had to be done for at least a month or two before this Power Book 4 even started. But he got a key, and he's talking about change the locks if you don't want me to come over. Hey, nigga, I'm getting that, I'm getting that gun. You Come over if you want to. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. He, he talking about change the locks if you don't want me here. We know damn well Gloria ain't living like this. Not with this antique stove either. I can't see Gloria talking about it. Man, you know what? I want to go with the rustic look. <laughs> the rustic vibe. Look how Gloria's living. She got she got all this up here. 
like she living on a damn farm or anything. And it, that's exactly what I was thinking it was. She said, I want to go to, let me see. This is basically how Gloria is living. Let me see something. <laughs> Come on, not that one. I'm going to find y'all something. The way they got Gloria living, making us believe this. Ain't none of my queens living like that. I ain't never seen nobody living like that. <laughs> Gloria went on uh, Pinterest. <laughs> she said, she said, what kind of stove can I get for the kitchen? She said, oh, this rustic uh, stove right here look good enough for me. I'm going to take that. Man, <laughs> ain't nobody about to, to deliver that antique shit to Chicago. You live where in Chicago? Man, we make this in Tennessee. We don't think that this will be equipped for a house that you have. This is a fire hazard waiting to happen. You want this up in Chicago? She said, oh, no, I think it'll fit in perfectly with what I got. They're like, ma'am, trust me, you don't want this rustic stove in your place. Matter of fact, I got a question to ask you. Does your bathroom have a door? Like, is, is it possible for water to get on this stove? Because if so, then it's not going to be good enough for you. She's like, oh, no, uh, yeah, I got a studio apartment. Whole time, Vic in the kitchen, listening to you take a shower. You in there singing, nice like this, I wish. Washing your hair, that raindrops would fall. Let it rain. You come out, this nigga Vic kissing on your neck and stuff. Like, come on now. What, what's going on here? You don't want Vic to have the key. You letting them kiss on you. And you got to, hey, yo, separate yourself, Vic. Now, if it gets a little out of control from there, then all right. I know you, you know, saying. You didn't expect this and you don't deserve this, but come on, you letting them kiss on your neck. You talking about this old <laughs> come on now. I'm gonna get y'all right. If y'all need any life advice on like how to survive and stay away from dumb shit, don't put yourself in these type of situations. Don't give your key to somebody, especially somebody in the fucking mob. Come on now. Somebody in the mob, Vic thinks he's better than everybody. He went to the bar and told her, Hey, let's go have a talk. He didn't say, let's have a talk here or let's go to your spot and talk. This nigga said, let's go back to my Buffalo house. Hey, at that moment, you should have been like, no, nah, this dude Vic is a little bit crazy. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not about to. No, no, Vic. No, 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 honey. <sighs> Gloria. <laughs> Miss Gloria, you need to change some locks, man. We keep seeing some. Some Irish guy coming up there. Now, I know he's not on the lease because the lease says it's only supposed to be one person living in an apartment. Um, just as your landlord, you're a very attractive woman. You need to be safe. Um, but if I see him using a key to get in your spot, I'm going to have to start charging you for two residents in that place. Because I clearly said on the contract that only one person can be living in this studio apartment. <laughs> Vic just up here. And then look at it. Like this gotta be an industrial place. She got the vents on the, you know what I'm saying? The industrial vents. They ain't in the walls or nothing because this is a concrete building. You can't put nothing in the walls. You just gotta have this shit hanging from the ceiling. It's gotta be upstairs or something. <laughs> Said Vic out there singing. <laughs> Every little step I take. You will be there. Every little step I take, we'll be together. Hey, Vic talking about Gloria. We friends to the end. And you know how I get. Dudes like Vic are the type of dude that'll say, if I can't have her, he can't either. Like, hey, yo, Vic, it, it ain't that serious, brother. It ain't that serious. But she's over here and like, I get it. You know what I'm saying? You want him to leave about the house. So you got to go with whatever he does so he doesn't turn hostile. But you letting him kiss on your neck, kiss on your hand, you got to tell him, hey, Vic, I'm done. Like, you got to you gotta put that pressure on Vic. Ladies, you got to tell him. I mean, be somewhat respectable because some of these niggas be losing their mind. But you have, hey, bro, it's over with, man. It, it ain't nothing. It ain't no, let's discuss us getting married, but you got to marry someone with Irish blood. No, it ain't none of that. Vic, you got to get the hell up out of here. And once Vic does leave, oh, you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to change the locks. Okay, I'm going to change the locks, all right. I'm going to change the locks and I'm going to change the residence. That's what the fuck I'm going to do. <laughs> they said Vic always looked like he about to cry. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Gloria's spot it, it ain't nothing but a, a semi upgrade of what Tommy just bought. <laughs> Miss V said Rick uh Rick. Vic is probably rough with women, but not men. Uh I don't know. I don't know. I I I could see he's gonna get in his feelings a lot. But 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 something with a guy like Vic though, I think I'm not sure if he's rough on just women or not, but I think with him seeing Gloria do something will make him get rough with anybody. At that point, he could just lose it. Now I don't see him tripping with Pops or Uncle Polly, but you know what I'm saying? He could trip out. Now, can he fight? Of course he's seen Simon get whipped on. He's seen Tommy take over the situation and rob him. So he probably fears Tommy a little bit. But the thing about life is you don't want any man to fear you. You don't want any man to fear you because the minute somebody fears you is the minute they can kill you. But also, on the other hand, if you a scary dude, no reason to act tough because a mind full of scared. Listen to me. A mind full of scared is better than a mind full of lead. So if you a scary dude, continue to be a scary dude. Don't play that tough guy role because you'll get knocked easily. But in Vic's case, you know, I can see him. I can see him. You ain't really built like that. You want to step up and prove your father that you tough. You get out in these streets and see, man. When you ain't got the protection of your family in the mob, man, it can get ugly for you, man. You seen that's one thing about this world, man. Nobody, I mean, nobody is above anybody. You might get away with a few things, but breaking into Gloria's apartment. Now, if I would have been in there and I would have, you know what I'm saying? And that's another thing, fellas. Be careful when you go over women's spot. It ain't no telling who they dealing with. Let's just say Tommy is a regular guy. He's going over Gloria's house to get some soup. She's taking a shower. Y'all just did y'all thing. You in there laying down. Some random dude just comes in because he had a kid as her ex. Now you in a situation that you might have to pop a dude or he can get upset and jealous. <sighs> Unless you really know them, don't go. Don't even go over to their spot, fellas. Just, just being honest with you. It's a crazy world out here, man, and nobody's predictable. You got to vet people. Now I'm over here giving y'all live goals. You know what I'm saying? They talking about Mo doing better than Steve Harvey. You should write a book. I'm like, hey, man, shit, I ain't, I ain't doing all that. I'm not here to give relationship advice. I'm giving you advice on how to survive in this world. <laughs> but if y'all got any questions, let me know. Because we just hit the three-hour mark. You know what I'm saying? Whenever we do power, we go at least two three hours so let me know if there's any questions you guys want to ask me because i got to get off of here i got to record at least two video well technically three two recaps in a video of power but let me know if you guys have any questions and i'll definitely go over that and ladies don't give your key to nobody fellas don't give your key to no chick either because she's gonna be popping up you just trying to play the game like Right when I get off of here, I'm turning the PlayStation on and I'm downloading an update to one of the games. You know what I'm saying? If y'all play Call of Duty, they just got the new uh, Warzone map. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to download that update. You ain't trying to be bothered. You got Gloria coming over, talking your ear off. You're like, I am not trying to hear that. I'm trying to chill. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you want to do. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah that's really about it i think we covered everything tonight too tommy got his new place we went over to flynn family we talked about uh diamond and Gennard on their little gta mission with tommy Gennard getting saved we talked about tommy killing rojas's people gloria being in the house with um <laughs> with damn Vic crazy ass, the Flynn family. Um, when will I do a Euphoria live again? So, Kendall, next Monday, we'll have Euphoria. Now, my channel is mainly power. Well, that's what it blew up with, and more people wanted to watch it. So, of course, last week on Monday, I didn't get to do Euphoria because we did episode one of book four. We did Tommy's first episode because it was Sunday was the finale for book two. Book one we did, I mean, book four, we episode one we did on Monday, and then I had the Super Bowl yesterday, 
So I did episode two. But Euphoria, I'll be back on Mondays. Next Monday, we'll have the Euphoria live. Also, the Euphoria recap would be up early. I know it's, you know, saying I'm getting behind, you know. Mo got to have a life too, y'all. I can't just sit in the house and record nonstop. Well, I do for the most part, but I got to have a life too. And I watched that Super Bowl, got a little too tipsy. <laughs> do I think that Tommy will have hallucinations of ghosts or Julio? Mm. I don't think it'll get to the point where, where Tariq was having them of Kanan, like to that level. He may think back. We already seen Tommy didn't have several flashbacks. His mom in the opening scene, him talking to ghosts, like, ghost, ghosts, we don't have to do it this way. So will he have hallucinations? I don't think so. I think the only reason Tommy, I'm mean, not Tommy, but Tariq was having a hallucina- hallucinations is because of everything that he went through and there's a lot of stress on him. For Tommy, he's more of a, Whatever the hell happens, I move forward with it. I mean, Tommy didn't kill his girlfriend. He didn't kill his pops. He just keeps it moving. For Tariq, it's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Since he's really experiencing the game on his own 100%. You remember because he was living with his dad at first. He was trying a few things. He ended up moving in with Tasha. He was still doing things up under his mom and working with her. So this is him trying to figure everything out on his own. So he's resorting back to his hallucinations to try to get ideas of what would other people do. So I think that's why Tariq has more hallucinations. Uh, do I think that JP will turn on Tommy from Rudy? Uh, no, I think they're going to have a, a solid relationship throughout the whole series. Now, whatever the relationship is with the son between like D-Mac and Tommy, that could be a little rough with Tommy, you know, saying working with CBI and then the relationship between JP and his son. But I don't think Tommy and JP are going to have any issues. Because they showed us that's what this whole thing was built on. Tommy actually finding a... This is the first time Tommy's found an actual connection within his family that he can be linked to. Him and his father wasn't close. Him and his mom, they grew up together, but he started to resent her. And right now, his brother is going through the same thing. Like Tommy wasn't really with his dad. He left Well, he went to jail. And JP wasn't really with his mom. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think they're going to turn on each other. They'll probably be brothers. Because you got to remember, Tommy needs a crew at least. So right now, Tommy's crew is going to be JP and Lillian. So I don't think they're going to turn. Support Gamer said Tommy, a.k.a. Casper, needs a new ghost in his life. Um, I won't say he needs a new ghost. I think he's going to take the – I think Tommy's going to take the power role, like the ghost role. Not being ghost, but you know, saying being that boss type, and then Diamond is going to be his right hand man. He's going to be working through like Tommy's going to be the big guy putting on CBI. I mean, CBI is already established, but they're going to have that partnership. So that's going to be like the little crew that's up under him. Do I think that Rojas's people will kill Diamond because his people got killed? Um. As of right now, Rojas doesn't know anything that's going on or as far as who killed him. The last thing Rojas knew was um, Diamond, he sold the eight bricks for the cartel. They got the money. They got everything they needed. So even if even if um, his people said anything, it, it, it would go back to Tommy. It was a white guy. You know what I'm saying? But no one knows who Tommy is except for Diamond. And no one even knows Tommy's name, really. So I don't think Rojas even knows that if they're dead, if they ever, you know, saying once they find them dead, of course, they're going to find them dead because it was an explosion of a car. Somebody's going to investigate it, but it's not going to link back to Diamond because Diamond did everything he was supposed to do. Kevin, could Jannar be jealous of Tommy in the future? Definitely. I already I already think. He's looking at it, everything that his brother is telling him. You got to remember, the relationship between Diamond and Jannar is a little, I mean, they're close. Don't get me wrong. You know, since his big brother, he's looking out for him. But everything Jannar has been telling his brother Diamond, man, I got these young dudes. We should bring them around. You know what I'm saying? Jannar is telling him, nah, we don't want want them. They're going to draw too much attention. They wild. They're going to do things differently. But with Tommy coming back, you remember Tommy basically robbed 
Jannard and Vic took their money and stuff and drugs. Diamond said, I want to meet this guy. Now, he's thinking we want to meet this guy so we can get some get back. Turns out Tommy returned everything to him. So when he sees Tommy getting respected by his brother because he didn't, you know what I'm saying? He already said, Tommy, oh, you should have took that money. Tommy's like, me and you ain't the same. So that friction is there. But Tommy knows that Diamond is the top guy. So, of course, Jannard is going to be a little upset. Now, could Jannard say something? Like, once they find out, maybe there's a scenario where he finds out that um, D-Mac, JP's son, you know what I'm saying, that's his uncle. He's like, man, you should take your uncle out. I mean, he's trying to step on us. It could be something like that. And that could lead into what I was saying about JP being the one to take out D-Mac, like protecting his brother Tommy. You know what I'm saying? That's just it's just little scenarios that be going in my head of what could possibly happen. But yeah, Jannard is definitely a little bit jealous of Tommy. Tommy Moore family, Chicago. Yeah. I mean, that's where his roots are. You know, he got his grandma's house, his grandma's there, his brother's living in that he never knew he had. So, you know. We'll see how it plays out, though, but the time has come. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. If you like these little after-show discussions every Sunday night, we definitely have these for about two and a half, three hours. Safe place, as long as you're respectable in the chat. I don't care what you talk about, as long as it's pertaining to power. If you like this content, like I said, hit that subscribe button. Definitely give me a like before you guys get out of here. I'm about to grab me something to eat, record these episodes for you. Episode two of Bel Air will be up tomorrow. Euphoria episode one will be up tomorrow. I have a breakdown of um, who Lillian is. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow afternoon. But we'll see. We'll see. So definitely hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you all for rocking with me. We'll be back at our regular scheduled time, Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Thank you all, man. I thank you all for the content. Y'all give me stuff to talk about. And also... Make sure you dry off before you put a robe on. Don't get out that shower and put that raw naked in that robe. Dry off, put the robe on, y'all. I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Thanks for watching.